Okay, very good. Good morning. Okay, this session is called Brahmastra. That means the last weapon, the last try, just before the examination. This is applicable for both old and new syllabus. Okay, so uh, if you want to take notes, please take notes, but the class will be really fast. So don't expect me slow. Now we'll start with section 123. Section 123 is dividend section. <coughs> 123 is like payment of dividends. We have two types of dividends, interim dividend and final dividend. In interim dividend, we have two options. Either you can pay from current year's profit or you can pay from surplus, which is not transferred to reserve. But there is an amendment they added on third option. The third option is profit of the next year before the AGM. From this, you can get one question. Okay, because profit of the next year before the AGM. That is a new addition added in this year of the amendment act. Now, before payment of dividend, what you should do, you should first adjust the previous year's losses. If you have not adjusted for. Then you have to make sure that depreciation has been calculated, depreciation has been adjusted. So previous year's losses are adjusted. And in case if you have deposits, if you have got any deposits from public, that public deposit, you should not have defaulted the public deposits. That you should keep remembering. And there is nothing called transferring per specific percentage to reserves. Okay, that is totally optional. Then once the dividend is declared, it should be paid off. It is nothing like uh, we can transfer the dividend for some other purpose, diversion of dividend. It is not allowed. So dividends once declared, it's become liability of the company. Once dividend is declared, it should be paid off within 30 days. Okay. If it is interim dividend, it will be proposed as well as declared by the directors. If it is final dividend, it is proposed by the directors, declared by the shareholders in the AGM by passing ordinary resolution. Shareholders cannot modify the dividend. Okay. Then coming to the final dividend. Final dividend can be paid out of four sources. Current year's profit, previous year's surplus, government money. Then one more thing is called reserves. That is free reserves. Whether the company can pay dividend out of reserves? Yes, they can pay out of free reserves. But they have to follow four rules. Rate rule. The maximum rate is average of last three years. Second rule is withdrawal rule. One tenth of the paid up capital and free reserves. That is the maximum amount you can withdraw. Third rule is usage rule. Once you withdraw, you should first utilize for the current year's losses adjustment. Fourth rule is balance rule. The balance in the free reserves after withdrawing should be at least 15% of the paid up capital. These four things you should keep in mind. Sir, whether I have any rules for interim dividend? Yes, you have a rule for interim dividend also. Interim dividend should be, means like if you are following, uh, you are withdrawing from the previous year surplus, which is not transferred to reserve. So if you are not paying out of current year's profit, but previous year surplus, then you have to follow one rule. The maximum rate is average of last three years rate. That is the only rule applicable. The difference between interim dividend and final dividend rule, that rate rule is, in final dividend, they use the word each of the last three years. But in interim dividend, they didn't use the word each of the last three years. That means the rate rule is applicable for final dividend only if you have paid dividend for last three years. So that each word is missing in the interim dividend. So average you can calculate even though if you have not paid in the previous year one or two years. But in final dividend, that rule is applicable only when if you paid all the three years. That is the thing. So this is section 123. Section 124 says, See, once, of all, once you declare the dividend, it should be paying off. If you are not paying off, one, what you should do? See, first of all, once I declare the interim dividend, it should be transferred to a separate bank account within five days. Okay, that is called dividend uh, account. That is a uh, escrow account, a normal current account. If you are not able to pay within five, because, for example, uh, there are so many people whose uh, bank account number may be mismatching, etc. Some people would have not claimed the dividend. Okay, today we are sending to NEFT or RTGS, but previously we are sending dividends, checks and warrants. So some people wouldn't have deposited the in cash their check. So that becomes like unpaid dividend. So after transferring to dividend account, it should be paid off within 30 days, but it is not payable, means it is not possible to pay within 30 days, means I am not having any problem. It's the shareholder who have to come and claim. So I should transfer to a separate account called unpaid dividend account. This should be done within seven days of the 30th day. If you are not doing that, then 12 percentage interest. Here it is 12 percentage interest because there is one more 18 percentage interest that is later. Here it is 12 percentage interest. This 12 percentage interest will be given to the shareholders, okay, who is going to claim the dividends, okay. So, from the 30th day, within 7 days you should transfer. If you are not transferring, then 12% interest per annum will be calculated proportionally till you transfer to unpaid dividend account. Then in the unpaid dividend account, there will be there for a period of 7 years. Shareholders can come and claim the unpaid dividend within any time, within 7 years. Okay. <clears throat> if it's not been claimed within 7 years, then it should be transferred to IEPF. Okay. 
and uh, IEPF la it will be transferred along with shares that is the greatest thing not only the dividend will be transferred to IEPF but also the shares will be transferred to IEPF sir how can my shares be transferred without my concern that is the highlight okay the company secretary is given power okay your share sir I am only having my share then how company they will be issuing a duplicate shares they will be issuing a duplicate shares and that trans that shares will be transferred to IEPF so without your concern your share can be transferred but once you are coming back after seven years you can claim from IEPF you can you have to show you have to show uh, whether uh, you have the adequate proof for it okay I'll now show then <coughs> this is one thing then second thing is like uh, sir who will be uh, creating IEPF central government parking problem government. <coughs> who will be creating uh, IEPF central government will be creating IEPF they will be granting certain funds to IEPF for uh, initial uh, then later they will be getting funds from various companies like unpaid dividend after a period of seven years then uh, share application money pending allotment deposits which is matured debentures which is matured but no one is claiming that means it's like an orphan there is no owner for that so if there is no owner for that then who is the owner government is the owner till the real owner comes but when the real owner comes we will give the shares also as well as the dividend also it's not that we will pay only the money we will give the share also so how uh, the government will get the shares government has now created a demat account okay demat account is in the name of IEPF so if the listed company the shares are dematerialized form then it should be means there is a separate demat account open in the name of IEPF from your name it will be transferred to the uh, government's name so this is how it will be done and money is also will be deposited there okay so this is the whole idea of IEPF they have asked this question last year because uh, before transferring to IEPF the seven years no before the seventh year three months before you should have given notice and after the end of seventh year within 30 days you should transfer so this three months is also important the 30 days is also important in 2017 October they have that, that, that time only it, uh, IEPF itself was formed so that uh, I think May 18 they asked this question okay maybe in again future they may not ask this question but you should know this then comes to uh, 125 that is IEPF fund for what they will use this fund they will be using the fund for creating investor awareness and they will be investing this money in uh, government uh, trust bonds etc uh, if a shareholder coming and claiming this money after the period of seventh year they will not get any interest at all but they will get their principal amount dividend though okay uh, debentures so whatever it is they will get the principal amount but they will not get any interest which is uh, created by IEPF by utilizing this fund okay see giving the principal itself is a big thing no next uh, section 126 abeyance see if you are not coming okay uh, because of some dispute so some dispute is there so any rights for you rights dividends bonus whatever it is it will be kept in abeyance because we don't know who is the real shareholder of the uh, company so till that time everything will be kept in abeyance that is the thing 127 punishment see if any director who is in charge for paying the dividend money after declaration which is the liability of your company if the director is not paying that money then he will be having a punishment imprisonment is there company has to pay 18 percentage interest okay 18 percent here it is 18 percentage in 124 it is 12 percentage okay so 18 percent interest should be charged up now but the company is not liable to pay and the director is not liable for imprisonment provided there is due for the shareholders like call money etc that has been adjusted with the dividend money okay lawful adjustment of the due <coughs> point number two shareholder has given some bank account we are trying to deposit in the bank account but it is getting bounced some technical error but you have to call the share means like you have to intimate the shareholder intimation to the shareholder is important then accidental omission that means there is no willful omission we have sent to everyone i don't know why you are not getting it accidental omission then um, you have given some uh, court cases etc that means who is a real shareholder we are not yet known so some dispute is pending we cannot do so in these cases and all there is an exemption so with this we completed dividend chapter so from this only questions can come so whatever i explained in this five ten minutes from this only dividends question will come okay then we will go to the next chapter section 128 books of accounts you will be keeping the books of accounts only in the register office if you are keeping anywhere else then you have to pass a board resolution and you should give it within seven days to roc then you have to maintain the books of accounts in accrual basis double entry okay there is nothing called cash basis but you can keep the books of account either in the physical form or in electronic form that is absolutely do your wish 
there is no nothing called like you have to maintain only in the electronic form okay you can keep servers also okay but at least one server should be in india if you are keeping in electronic form it should be printable readable retrievable and it should be unaltered okay you cannot keep on uh, alt f2 put a back date you cannot alter and all okay you have to keep it unaltered form better you have to convert into pdf okay multi ledger printing board you have to keep it in pdf form then you can inspect the books of accounts like means you means directors directors can inspect the books of accounts not shareholders basically directors can inspect the books of accounts the books of accounts because sir directors only responsible for maintaining books of accounts and why they should inspect the books of accounts not all directors will be in charge for maintaining books of accounts the finance directors only will be maintaining the books of accounts marketing directors sales directors some other people will be there if they want to uh, see the books of accounts they can see the books of accounts sir i don't know how to see the books of accounts i i don't know how to inspect the books of accounts can i appoint some agent who is a charter accountant other than the auditor of the company yes you can appoint by passing board resolution sir uh, i want to inspect the books of accounts of subsidiary company can i do that yes subsidiary companies books of accounts also you can inspect by passing board resolution both in the holding company as well as the subsidiary company sir can shareholders inspect the books of accounts shareholder has right to inspect only the registers of the company and not the books of accounts of the company but there is a regulation <coughs> regulation number 89 of table f of schedule 1 which says shareholder by passing order resolution can inspect the books of accounts so whether shareholders has right it's not really given in section 128 but they can also do that because there is a regulation given in schedule schedule 1 table f regulation number 89 so there are two regulations which are very important regulation number 80 of table f of schedule 1 which says dividend cannot be increased by the shareholders once proposed by the directors okay that is regulation number 80 which is not given in section section 123 is nothing to do with dividends okay means like uh, th that increase of by the shareholders it is regulation number 80 now come back how many years you have to maintain the books of accounts for a period of eight years the very important thing is if there is an investigation pending against your company this eight years can be extended till the time of investigation is over this will be very important at the time of section 130 because section 130 says nclt can do ask you to do revision of accounts that time nclt generally they will ask you to do eight years but if the investigation is pending till the books of accounts is open no till that time okay we take, we, till when you are keeping they can go back and they can ask you to revise this question may come for this examination because people are generally thinking for board means it is three years for nclt means eight years this investigation point everyone is forgetting so from this they may ask the question because it is the last line of the section okay then So I repeat, section 128 says 8 years, but it also says till the investigation is getting over, you have to maintain. 130, there is a revision by tribunal. Tribunal can go back till any years, okay, till the time you are keeping the books of accounts, if the investigation is pending, okay. I don't know whether ILFS will be the prey for this. ILFS, you know, right? ILFS is uh, running. <coughs> Next, you have to, uh, then we have to see section 129 financial statements financial statements you have to keep it in schedule 3 format okay schedule 3 financial statements in schedule 3 form and you have to comply with accounting standards <coughs> if the financial statements if you have subsidiary then they have to consolidate the financial statement sir whether if there is a foreign subsidiary whether i have to consolidate the foreign subsidiary also yes you have to consolidate the foreign subsidiary also okay accommodate plus i so foreign subsidiary also you have to consolidate sir i have only one subsidiary and that too it's a foreign subsidiary whether i have to consolidate yes you have to consolidate okay then um, section 129 also says in case if the holding company is consolidating subsidiary and sub subsidiary subsidiary company need not consolidate sub subsidiary in case if there is a violation of complying with section 133 that is accounting standards then they have to give it in the notes accounts as 17 which is segment reporting is not applicable for government company which is in the defense department defense things okay so these are the things to be remembered in section 129 section 130 talks about revision by tribunal tribunal can revise the financial statements it will ask you ask the company to revise the financial statement provided if sebi or central government or income tax authority ask the tribunal to revise the financial statements basically okay so the complaint should be received from sebi income tax authority okay or central government they are telling to nclt to revise then nclt can ask the company to revise so once the company is revising the balance sheets then they have to get it re-audited then it should be re-adopted okay and it should be filed with roc then section 131 voluntary revision by board of directors 
board of director can do voluntary revision by passing first board resolution they have to approve the nclt once nclt given approval maximum period of 3 years they can go back and they can amend it generally for the purpose of 129 or 134 violation that is only the sue section they can go for uh, revising the financial statement what is the section 129 and 134 then so when the uh, tribunal is given approval then you have to revise the financial statement you have to go back and you can get audited by auditors and you should call for egm and you should do readoption and you should do refiling with roc this second procedure is same for both 130 as well as 131 that means re-audit readopt by calling egm then file it with roc roc filing is under section 137 aoc4 has to be filed initial file is already there but this revision will take over the and you should also give the reason for revisioning of the financial statements then section 132 nfra will not be asked for your examination then 133 accounting standards accounting standard is uh, there are two accounting standards one is nakas accounting standards nakas accounting standard is uh, 211 3c of 1956 that is as1 to as29 then we have indas which is central government accounting standards which is uh, indas we have no that it is accounting standard rules basically so you have to comply whichever the cases if indas is applicable for you net worth 250 crores then India is you have to follow otherwise yes if you are violating then i told you section 129 you should give the disclosure of no stock accounts next to section 134 signing of financial statement and board report who has to sign the financial statement chairman if he is authorized or two directors if there is an md then md should mandatorily sign then ceo cfo cs there are two amendments here one is previously one of them shall be md that shall has been removed second is ceo if he is a director the director has been removed so ceo should mandatorily sign even though if he is not director okay then contents of board report in contents of board report you have like extract of agm in that there is an amendment for listed companies they need not give the full extract of agm here they can tell the website address where they have hosted the extract of agm a extract of annual general sorry extract of annual return mgt 9 which is a extract of mgt 7 okay so mgt 7 or a summary will be mgt 9 so that mgt 9 itself will go page by page so for listed companies they told host website address here okay just give the website address and they will see from the website okay so you need not attach any okay next so extract of annual return number of meetings attended by the board of directors then uh, related party transactions loans given to related parties utilization of it aoc2 attachment then uh, conservation of energy technological absorption then director's responsibility statement in director responsibility statement you have to write about going concern then safeguarding of assets prevention of reduction of fraud and error implementation of ifc okay uh, <coughs> then uh, you have to write that financial performance of the company those things and all you should write then uh, new amendment is uh, the company has implemented policy for uh, uh, investigating that uh, harassment sexual harassment that has been newly inserted then uh, csr committee risk management committee and all about that you should write the policy of csr committee whether they have spent any uh, recommendation given by audit committee which you have not followed it that things you have to write here then section 135 csr there is an amendment in this because for starting a csr committee there is a three threshold limit which is given turnover net worth profit 1505 which is mentioned in the act as any previous year but which has been changed to immediately preceding previous year that is if you have in the last three last year then it is applicable so what is that turnover thousand net worth 500 and net profit 5 only if it is in last year then you have to create a csr company in the first in this year and continuously for a period of three years if there is no applicability then you can dissolve the csr committee you have to spend two percentage of the average of last three years net profit there is an amendment here because if you are not spending this two percentage then you have to create a fund okay and transfer within 30 days from the end of the financial year which is very very important you have to create a fund now so yeah and from july 2019 which is not applicable for your examination fine has been reduced till now there is no fines 
okay so you have to maintain just tell in the director's report that we have not spent it but there is no fine for it but now they introduce the fines but it is not applicable for your examination that is this uh, november 19 it is not applicable from next examination may 20 onwards i think 25 lakh rupees fine has been introduced in csr see you have to create a separate fund for it that means like a dividend you are transferring to separate account no like that you have to open a separate account transfer it that is not your money now anymore it has to be spent excess spent cannot be carried forward but unspent money can be carried forward for a period of 3 years okay i think 3 years or 2 years so they have mentioned it okay within that time you have to spend it there is an amendment so amendment i will separately take i'm just telling now that it should be spent now okay that means you can carry forward and within 2 years or 3 2 years 3 years okay 3 years within 3 years you have to spend it so from this they may ask question okay next section 135 also says for what objectives and all i can spend the csr csr can be spent only for schedule 7 objective but that is not only for it is like recommended okay schedule 7 which includes like prime minister relief fund clean ganga swachh bharat uh, then slum area clearances sustainable development uh, combating human deficiency then uh, eradication poverty hunger unemployment education rural sports etc you have to spend only in the local area first you have to give preference to the local area okay then for calculating the profit you should not include the foreign profit for calculating expenses you should not include a political expenses or employee alone expenses employees can be benefited out of the csr expenses but not more than 5% of the csr expenses totally spent so what is the maximum percentage for the employees 5% so if they are given in the question that the company is having profit only from the foreign branch indian branch is not making any profit then you should not consider that profit itself totally because there is one question in the previous years section 136 circulating the finance statements to shareholders there is an amendment here previously it is mandatory for circulating the finance statement at least 21 days before the agm but there is a section for shorter notice if a company has given shorter notice then circulation of finance statement can also be in shorter period that means i can i i still can give the finance statement which is signed by the board of directors only on say 20th of september it's not necessary the 21 days notice should be given provided 95% of the people who comes to the meeting are approving this finance statements so adoption should be done by 95% of the people then the finance statement can be done in shorter notice understood because now it has been amended previously it is the shorter notice only for the notice no notice for the calling for agm now they have given for finance statement also i tell you this is very important because now you cannot do back dated financial statement signing like previous years udin should be generated so this shorter notice period which is given to section 136 will be helpful for the auditors because auditors are thinking they have to sign maximum before 6th or 7th of the september then only udin can be generated within 30 days but you can still go for shorter notice meeting provided all the shareholders approving the generally they will approve no so you can even go for 20th or 21st of september you can tell your partners if they are in uh, fear auditors are using time machine for past 40 to 60 years correct because in, we even when you are signing in october you will put september month right so that is called time machine nothing that next so next we will go for uh, section 137 filing of finance statements you all know within 30 days of agm we have to file AOC 4 once you adopted the finance statement in AGM you have to file AOC 4 with ROC AOC 4 has three types AOC 4 AOC 4 CFS AOC 4 XBRL AOC 4 CFS is applicable only when you have subsidiary consolidation subsidiary includes associates also okay then AOC 4 XBRL is applicable if the all the company private or public anything listed mandatory if the paid up capital is 5 crores or the turnover is 100 crores XBRL is applicable but for four companies banking insurance electricity power sector nbfc for this companies under xbrl is not applicable so they have to still go for aoc4 at all uh, itself if you are not having agm itself then you have to file it provisionally 30 days ought to have been held if you have conducted agm then file it final age final it is called final once it is adopted it's called final agm conducted but not adopted then provisional agm itself is not conducted provisional 
So in two scenarios, you will be filing provisional. And once adopted, it's called final. Sir, first I file provisional. Then again, again I have to file final, yes. Once adopted, you should file again final. And you have to give the reason for provisional and final. Then, sir, my financial statement is unaudited. Whether I should file it, the unaudited financial statement, no, that is not allowed. Okay, only audited, <coughs> unadopted can be filed. Unaudited cannot be filed. Next, this is section 137. See, always in shoot, will not ask the straight question. They will tell for which companies and all, XBR is not applicable. Or they will give you a company where it may be a banking company or anything and whether XBR is applicable kind of. Okay. Or they will ask you in MCQ, out of the following company, which company XBR is not applicable. So, one simple concept can be asked either in the descriptive question or in MCQ. Okay. You should be strong each and every word. Okay, it's not like this section is important. If you think one section is not important, from there MCQ will come. Can you be able to understand? So, if the very important section, descriptive question. Slight, light section, MCQ question. So, nothing should be left out. No section should be left out. Nothing called important section, not important section, nothing like that. Okay. Then comes to section 138, internal audit. Internal audit is applicable to all listed companies. Public companies having four option any of the four if it is satisfied then internal audit is applicable turnover 200 crores or more outstanding loan exceeding 100 crores or more paid up capital 50 crores or more deposits 25 crores or more for private company turnover 200 outstanding loans exceeding 100 who has to be appointed as internal auditor charter accountant or uh, cost accountant or any other professional as the board may thinks fit audit committee will be consulted before appointing the internal auditor once the internal auditor is appointed it is not necessary that person should be a independent. He can also be a employee of the company. Okay. Section 139. Appointment of auditors. Auditors, first they have to be either individual or a firm. They cannot be a body corporate, but except LLP. Subsequent auditor of a non-government company shall be appointed for a period of 5 years. From the first AGM till the conclusion of 6th AGM. If it is a firm, they can be reappointed. If it is individual, where rotation is applicable, they cannot be reappointed. When rotation is applicable, if the company is a listed company or a public company having paid up capital of 10 crores, turnover of, sorry, borrowings of 50 crores. Private company, paid up capital 50 crores, borrowing is also 50 crores. 50-50 has been amended. Because previously it was 20 crores, next it was amended to 50 crores. That is an amendment. So rotations. If the rotation is applicable, individual can be only one for five years. Then firm means two. That means one, five years, then reappointment for another five years. After this, they should be going for a cooling period of five years. Okay. Directors cooling period three years for independent directors. But independent audited is five years cooling period. Okay. Then, if it is a subsequent order of the government company, they should be appointed within 180 days from the commencement of financial year. Okay. And they will be holding one year, only, only one year. Who will be appointing? CNAG will be appointing. Okay. Then, first order of a non-government company. First order of the non-government company shall be appointed by the board of directors within 30 days of incorporation. If the board fails, then they have to intimate the shareholder and the shareholder shall be appointed within 90 days of incorporation. For government company, CNAG has to be appointing the auditors within 60 days of incorporation. If CNAG fails, then the board has to appoint within next 30 days. If the board fails, then shareholders within 60 days of CNAG's failure. Okay. <coughs> so overall time limit for government companies, first auditor is 120 days. 60 then 30, then 60 from that 60. So that means they have only literally 30 days after this board of directors, okay. Next. Sir, audit committee recommendations. If there is an audit committee, then audit committee has to recommend to the board of directors. Board can accept the recommendation or the board can reject the recommendation. If the board is rejecting the recommendation, they have to again go to the audit committee. So the audit committee can second time recommendation. If the board again rejects it, 
Then under section 134, the board has to give in writing in the board's report why I am rejecting the audit committee's recommendation. And they can go forward with their, their own recommendation to the shareholders. And shareholders by passing ordinary, general, uh, ordinary resolution, the annual general meeting, they can appoint the auditors. ADT 1 has to be filed within 15 days by the company. Okay, ADT 1 for appointment. In ADT 1, you have to mention from which date to which date. Generally, it will be for a period of 5 years. Then comes to section 139.8, that is vacancy. In case if there is an auditor appointed by the uh, shareholders who is getting vacant, then the vacancy should be filled within 30 days by the board of directors. If it is resignation, then it should be mandatorily ratified. If it is removal or disqualification, it need not be ratified, but it should be appointed. That, pe that uh, auditor will be holding the office for a period of till the AGM, that's all. And they, they, later they will be appointed. Rotation of auditors. Internal rotation is also possible if the shareholder ask. For example, in a firm, there are three partners. If the shareholder ask, between the partners itself, in the same firm, they can be rotated. Then, rotation from one firm to another firm, there should not be any common partner between these two firms. But, in case if the partner is resigned from this firm and join the next firm, provided he is not the signing partner in the both the firm, then that firm can be appointed. So, this is possible. The engagement partner is the word. Rule 6.2. Okay, it is 2B inside, I think so. So, rule 6, they told it's engagement partner. It's not just a partner. So, I can be in this firm for a period of 5 years. I am not a signing partner. Then the company goes to the next firm. I can resign from this firm. I can join that firm. Okay, there is no disqualification for that firm. See, in deep, you have to go and study. Then only you can enjoy the subject. Next, uh, section... 130, removal and resignation. If the auditor wants to be removed by the shareholder, shareholder has to intimate the board of directors. Then board has to pass a board resolution and apply to <coughs> central government. Then central government gives approval. After that approval, within 60 days, they should conduct an EGM. Then in EGM, they have to pass special resolution and remove the auditors. Once the auditor is removed, there is a vacancy created. Either that vacancy can be filled by the board of directors or the shareholders themselves can fill the vacancy, provided they, sh they have to give a special notice with which uh, auditors they are filling the vacancy. Then, resignation. See, before removal, auditor should be given opportunity of being heard. If he is abusing the position, then in auditing you should write, there is a section 21 misconduct. In law you should write, you should go to NCLT and you should get it exempted from circulating the representation. If the exemption is not obtained from NCLT, then you have to mandatorily circulate the recommendation, means like uh, representation. So I'm mixing audit and because section 21, there is no abusing the auditor's position. This will be there. Then resignation. Auditor have to intimate about his resignation to board of directors in a letter stating with his reason, then he should intimate ROC in form ADT 3, removal ADT 2 to central government, ADT 3 is resignation by auditors. Then in case central CNDG appointed him, then he should intimate the CNDG also. And the fine has now been amended. In the amendment ordinance and all, they have amended the fines. So many fines has been amended, which we'll be seeing later. As of now, you just see that there is some contravention which has been amended. Okay. Section 141 disqualification. Auditor should not be an employee of the company, should not be promoter, director, or their relatives. He should not hold any shares in the company, he or his partners, but his relatives can hold shares up to face value of rupees 1 lakh. If they have more than their own lakh, they have to sell it within 60 days. But the relative should not hold even a single share in the holding company or subsidiary company. They can hold only in this company. Indebtedness, auditors, partners, relatives put together 5 lakh rupees. Guarantee 1 lakh rupee. If the auditor is removed by the tribunal under section 140, he is disqualified for a period of 5 years. If the same auditor has been removed by the court, then 10 years. Auditor should not have any business connection. Auditor should not 
<coughs> do any other service which is provided in section 144. Previously, they mentioned parent, subsidiary, associate and all. That has now been removed. Any of your associates, that means where you are having a fee sharing arrangement, should not do any services which is given in section 144. That is an amendment made here. So, what are the exceptions is like telephone, hospitality, hospital services, food services, you can enjoy from your client. You can uh, use that services of your client. So, electricity, hospital, stay, travel, telephone, that's all. These are exempted totally. An auditor should not do any other services other than professional services. If he is want to buy anything from his client, he can buy it in arm's length price. This are section 141. Then section 142, remuneration. Fees plus reimbursement of expenses, both has to be included in the remuneration. And it should be disclosed in the financial statements. So previously we are not including the reimbursement thing, now reimbursement is also included. Section 143, powers and duties of auditor. Auditor is having power to access the books of accounts where it is kept. Even if he is not going to the branch, he can ask the books of accounts of the branch to come. If he is not auditing the branch, he can ask the company to do appoint to appoint another auditor to audit the branch. Okay. Then auditor <coughs> has right to get information explanation. Inquiry powers of auditors. Auditor should see whether any loans given based on security properly secured. No loans has been prejudicial to the interest of the company. Whether any personal expense of the director is charged after the revenue of the company. Shares has been allotted for cash but cash not received. Investments are sold less than the cost price. Okay, provided the company is not a banking company or investment company. And much of the assets are investment assets. Book entries. Transaction represented by mere book entries which is not prejudicial to the interest of the company. These are inquiry powers of the auditors. Other than this, the auditor should sure, make sure that books of accounts are complete, financial statements are prepared as per the books of accounts, financial statements shows full disclosures and uh, accounting standard has been complied with, there is no violation in following the accounting standards etc. <coughs> then any uh, director disqualification under section 164 subsection 2, now it is very famous because so many directors got disqualified because of not filing of annual accounts and returns. Long term <coughs> contracts or derivative contracts, if there is any provision to be made, you should make the provision. Then, uh, foreseeable losses, you should make provision. Transfer to be IEPF, whether they have transferred. See, normal audit report, they will not ask question. From the rules only, they will ask question. These three points, they will ask question. Okay. Then, if you have any qualification, you have to mention the qualification in the audit report. You have to uh, follow CARO if it is applicable, section 143.11. You have to comply with accounting standards and auditing standards mentioned in section 143.10. And in case if there is any fraud, which is not other than uh, reportable in the section 134, because there are two things. Fraud less than 1 crore, fraud equal to or more than a crore. If fraud is less than a crore, then you have to just intimate to the board of directors and audit committee they will be mentioning their board report. But if the fraud is equal to or more than a crore, then you should wait for 45 days time, get their reply. Whether they are replying or not, within 15 days after the 45th day, file it with central government in form ADT 4. If, <coughs> if I am giving it to central government and all, whether I am violating my confidentiality, whether section schedule 2 of part 1 and class 1 confidentiality whether i am violating that for this section 143.13 says because of doing this fraud reporting and all you are not violating your confidentiality then section 144 restrictions on certain services what are all services you should not do as an auditor auditor should not provide accounting bookkeeping internal audit actuarial services, management consultancy, information system implementation, 
then banking advisory, investment advisory, any other management consultant services. Auditor should not do either by himself or through his representatives. Okay. Then, section 145, auditor to sign audit report. So, you cannot cry after doing an audit because it is so risky. Either you give qualified report or adverse report, but you have to sign it. 146, auditor should attend AGM. Either auditor should himself attend the AGM or he should send his representative to attend AGM. If he is not going or he is not sending his representative, then get yourself exempted from attending AGM by passing ordinary resolution in the general meeting. Then, section 147, penalties. There is an amendment here. If your auditor, if unwillingly you have violated the section, then the penalty is 25,000 to 5 lakhs or 4 times of the fees which whichever is less. If willfully you have violated 50,000 to 25 lakhs, previously it was 1 lakh to 25 lakhs, now it is 50,000 to 25 lakhs or 8 times of the fees it whichever is less. Okay. Then for directors who have violated this auditor's section appointing etc., it is 10,000 to 1 lakh. For the company it is 20,000 to 5 lakhs. This fine section may be asked in MCQs. Okay, pre, you know, last attempt they asked me, oh, okay, you don't know, because the MCQ paper is not released, you know. Instead of safeguarded so much the MCQ paper, you should not see how much you got in MCQ itself totally. Now, so MCQ, they asked three questions in penalties, actually. Students only told, I, I myself didn't see, but students told that three questions is asked from penalties, sir. FEMA penalties and all they are asking, sir. CB penalties they are asking, sir. Okay. So penalties, I don't say it's very important, but it's important. Some penalties is you should remember. Okay, I'm not saying all the penalties, but few sections penalty you should remember. Then uh, section 138, cost records. Sorry, 148, 148. Okay, cost records. There are two things in this section. One is cost records, another one is cost audit. Cost record is applicable in case if the company is in regulated sector or in non-regulated sector. So, you know, in regulated sector, electricity company, telecommunication company, then uh, industrial alcohol, then oil and gas, etc. In non-regulated sector, steel, cement, okay, uh, medical devices, space research equipments, etc. In both the scenarios, if the turnover is 35 crores, then cost records is applicable. Cost audit is applicable in case if the it is regulated sector, the overall turnover is 50 crores and the regulated sector turnover is 25 crores. And in non regulated sector, the overall turnover is 100 crores and the sectoral turnover is 35 crores. Cost audit to be done by cost accountant, okay, who is in practice. He should be appointed within, you uh, should complete the audit within 180 days from the end of the financial year and it should be appointed within 180 days from the commencement of financial year, okay. And uh, it should be forwarded within 180 days that the audit report, uh, cost audit report should be forwarded to the board of directors within 180 days and the board should give it to central government within next 30 days, okay. Then section 149, now comes to directors. From this onwards, for both old syllabus and new syllabus, it is applicable. Section 149 talks about directors. In directors, you have to appoint only individuals as directors. Okay. For one person company, minimum one and maximum 15. For private company, minimum two and maximum 15. For public company, minimum three and maximum 15. In case if you are going for more than 15, then the auditor has to be, means like the, uh, the special person has to be passed by the shareholders. Okay. So the director should ask the shareholders to come and pass special resolution. And one more thing, section 14 has to be amended. Section 14 is uh, AOA, you should amend the AOA also. Then, for Section 8 company, this restriction is not applicable. Okay, they can have more than 15 directors, even without passing special resolution, even without passing ordinary resolution also. Board itself can pass, just, uh, they can appoint another directors also. Then, shh, government companies also, this thing is exempt. Then, uh, Section 1, 49 subsection 3 says, uh, for subsection 1 proviso says, woman director. You should appoint the woman director in case if the company's paid up capital is 100 crores or more, turnover 300 crores or more. 
Woman director, if there is a vacancy, it should be filled within three months or next board meeting, whichever is later. Alternate director for the woman director need not be woman director. Uh, this provision all you don't know. First rule you know, but it's real. Now, alternate director for woman director need not be woman director. It can be even a men also. Because section 161 subsection 2 says alternate director for the independent director should be an independent director. He should be a qualified independent director. But alternate director for the woman provision, there is no provision. Now, coming back to the woman director. So, uh, after the woman director, you have resident director. There is an amendment here. Previously, you have to see the previous year status for the residents. But in the current uh, act, it says, even if he is resident who stays in India for a period of more than 180 days in this year, and you can appoint him as the resident director in this year. Okay. And uh, if the company is incorporated, say, after uh, 1, 4 and all, we can even see proportionally. Okay, 180 days proportional also you can see. That is an amendment. Then independent director. Independent director is applicable for all listed companies. Public company having paid up capital 10 crores or more, turnover 100 crores or more, loans, borrowing, debenture deposit exceeding 50 crores. Once you appointed uh, independent director, he will be holding for a period of till the appointment. Okay, you can tell the tenure or five years, whichever is less. You can even appoint for less than five years. Auditor, you cannot appoint for a period less than five years, but independent director, you can appoint less than five years. He can be reappointed for another term, but he cannot be reappointed for more than continuous of two terms. Even if you have appointed the independent director only for a period of three years, even though he is reappointed for a period of another three years, you cannot reappoint him unless he is going for a cooling period. So it is not like I have 10 years period, so I can have three three terms, other three years terms. You cannot do that. In listed companies, one third of the data should be independent. In public company, at least two data should be independent. Okay. Independence. When it will be affected? Okay. Who is not called as independent director? Who is said to be having the independence? He should not be a promoter, director, or the relatives. But if he is in employment, after three years of his retirement, he can become independent director. He should not be relatives for the auditors. Okay. Or he should not be auditor himself. Okay, auditor or his partner or their relatives. Legal counsel is eligible to become independent director, provided the turnover is obtained from this company is not more than 10 percentage. CEO of a non-profit organization can become independent director, provided the contribution from this company to the uh, NGO is not more than 25 percent of the total receipts. Now comes the pecuniary interest. Okay, the pecuniary interest. If I received as a remuneration in the previous years, 10 percentage they are allowing. Okay. If my relatives are doing uh, business with the company, then the transaction with this company, 50 lakhs or 2 percentage they are asking. So it should be, if it is less than 2 percentage or 50 lakhs, then it's not a problem. So it's like my remuneration 10 percentage, their remuneration is say 2 percentage. So totally you can say up to 12 percentage put together, you and your relatives. Okay. So I can even have a shares, an independent director can even have shares, but it should be less than 2% shareholding. Okay. So any other thing is called pecuniary interest. Independent director should not receive a proper remuneration. Okay, like monthly remuneration is not possible. But his remuneration can be reimbursement expenses, sitting fees, profit linked commission. There is no fixed percentage for profit linked commission. Overall maximum remuneration should not increase more than 11 percentage. Okay, these things you should keep in mind. Then, independent director is responsible for all activities wherever he has given consent. So, if he has not given consent for those activities, he is not responsible. Section 150, data bank for independent director. Independent director, if I am not able to search by myself, I can ask central government and they will be providing us data bank. From there, you can select the independent director. 151, small shareholder director. Small shareholder means a person in the listed company not having shares more than 20,000 rupees. In case the company is having 1,000 small shareholders, then it is not compulsory for the board to appoint, but if the shareholder asks one tenth or 1,000, whichever is less, then the board has to appoint the small shareholder director. He will be having tenure of period of three years. 
he should be capable of becoming independent director then section 151 also says the maximum tenure is 3 years and later you cannot be reappointed at all section 152 subsection 1 first director of the company first director is the person whose name is mentioned in the articles of association as the first director if the articles didn't mention then subscriber to the AOA, MOA if they are individuals if subscriber to the MOA is not individuals then you have to call the general meeting then you have to appoint the director then 152 subsection 2 generally director shall be appointed in the general meeting by passing ordinary resolution 152 3 DIN okay every director should hold DIN number there is an amendment in future some other number can be given as DIN number. They may link other number also with the DIN. Okay. 4 declaration. Every director should give declaration that he is not disqualified to become director. 1. C. Auditor also should give a declaration that NCLT, uh, there is no NCLT proceeding against him. He is not disqualified to become auditor, etc. Other auditors before appointing. Auditors should generally give it to either audit committee or to the board of directors. Here, in section 152.4, director is giving. Okay. 152.5 is consent. Auditor also should give consent. Director also should give consent. Okay, to become director. But, in 152.5, consent is not applicable for government company and section 8 company. Okay. Then, 152.6a. Uh, there is an amendment. You have to see the amendment. What now? What now? There is an amendment in that DIN. See, now you have six digit DIN, no? Previously, it means like future, this DIN number may be anything. They can tell this is the DIN number. Your PAN number will be DIN number. Or your other number will be DIN number. There is no specific provision for proper allotment of DIN. They can tell some other number as DIN number. So they, can they will not. Number. They will not tell now. If I, if they tell openly now, then you will start protesting from today. Already enough protest is going on. Okay. They will tell once they will become majority in everywhere. Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, Future Sabha, Ella Sabha. Once again, then they will dictate the terms. No. <coughs> See, previously we are afraid of only income tax, correct? Now all the directors are operating of company sector because now it's very simple. If you are not doing anything, your company will be vanished. Strike off of companies, disqualification of directors, then uh, fines every day hundred rupees. Now certain section and all every day five thousand rupees and all there fines. You know one LLP we forgot to file uh, this uh, solvency forms and eleven and eight forms. When we try to file, it it is asking 9.5 lakh rupees only ROC fees. 9.5 lakh rupees. Three and a half years, I think four years. Uh, four years, three and a half years they didn't file. Solvency declaration and financial statement. It is not even necessary to get audited. Director has to declare the solvency. Yes, solvency is there. That's all. They didn't file this form. We, now when they are trying, it is asking 9 lakh rupees. One company where it got striked off because they have not filed analog on return because the company is not doing any big business. If we want to revive the company, CS fees alone 1.5 lakhs because NCLT etc etc. Then analog on annual returns fees, it comes to somewhere around 2 and a half lakhs. So, once you start the company, make sure at least you are working to pay remuneration to make the company active. You know, DIR KYC has to be filed by 30th September. They got extension because otherwise 5000 rupees fine. DIN will be blocked. Yenna section, you cannot do anything. If you put digital signature, it will say bung. Okay, you are not eligible to file this. Till now, whatever importance is given for ITR filing, the same importance within next two years they will give for all this ROC filings. I will tell you, this government is very, very stringent. They are strong. Because see, daily 100 rupees. Daily 100 rupees, okay? So if I fail to file, okay, you can take chance. But the meter is running. 72,000 rupees per annum mudro. Trim pata. Can you able to understand? So, where is the money for filing it? And if you are not filing it, 
2 years 3 years la company will be strike off 2 years la company strike off if they fi didn't file within 2 years then 3 years the dad will be disqualified gone case then you cannot do any business in the form of company if you are not doing in a company form then the bank they will not give loan in the way lock pantanga so only the company which is in compliance they will get all the facilities of the government in the way they are locking it see whether if you are uh, having more than one din because it is possible friend name back name back name friend name you can put another din i have seen people who are having more than one din and all now when the din number is linked with other till now din is not linked with other pan also they are trying to link with other that's the issue future la din will other link panta then once the government know other number they know history geography physics chemistry of you okay where and all you are dad ra shape etc 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 then how many times your din is blocked how many times you went to nclt appealed and get it rectified etc etc then in future whether you can have we can whether you can open a company or not they will tell all these things okay once you if you want to start one more company they will tell a stupid fellow okay what is the thing you will just open a company you will not do anything then the company will get closed your din will be blocked then you will go for appeal etc see why i am telling is government may link everything big data it's now what the government is thinking big data means everything should be linked and there will be big data and sitting in one office they can analyze every data so future i will tell you bathrooms will have one sensor if you go urine the sensor will send you a message to okay you should not uh, have sh uh, sugar for next tea because your sugar levels over and the model link panni google will tell you okay say okay come back if you uh, revision fast revision bullet revision now come back They don't ask any questions okay now <laughs> <laughs> section 156 ah uh, 152 6a okay rotation of directors rotation of director rotation is applicable to all the companies which is a public company so public listed rotation is applicable not less than 2/3 of the total directors shall be rotation and out of which 1/3 shall be rotated at every agm if more than 1/3 is having a longest office generally how this 1/3 will be decided person who is having longest office if more than 1/3 is having longest office then mutual consent if mutual consent is not working only draw of lots okay and retired directors also eligible for reappointment then 1226e automatic reappointment and retirement reappointment retired directors eligible for reappointment if he got ordinary resolution in his favor then he can get reappointment 1227a 7b says automatic reappointment in case if the agm has happened and your business is not put on lost then you can get automatic reappointment provided previous appointment is not under section 162 that means more than one director is appointed in a single resolution so you should not have appointed under that section no special resolution or no specific resolution is required for appointing you as a director so because previous appointment is in section 16111 then you need a separate resolution for appointing you okay so if you are appointed under section 1222 then it's not necessary the special res means a specific resolution is required for appointing you again so if you are in that category you are not disqualified you are not expressed your unwillingness you are not expressed you have not been vacated then you can get automatically reappointed under section 1227a 7b this section alone they can ask for even 6 marks question this this part of the section so full 152 also they need not ask 152 7a 7b alone they can ask for 6 marks question because that much content is there in that question then One fifty-three. Din number allotting. You have to file DIR three with all necessary proofs. One fifty-four. They will be giving you din within thirty days. This din may not be whatever the din you are having now. Central government will give a different number also. DIR KYC has to be filed. DIR three KYC has to be filed. This year it is October fourteenth. This is the cutoff. Generally, it should be filed within August. okay then um 154 155 is you can have only one din you cannot have more than one din 156 the director should intimate the company about his din number and 157 is company should intimate the roc okay within 30 days you should tell 15 days ah okay here day or 12 plays a vital role whenever a director is appointed without filing 
DI at 12, you cannot be said to be director. But, sir, how director should intimate the company about his DIN number? Before becoming a director itself, you should have DIN number, no? Because 152.3 says you should have DIN number. 152 is appointment. Then how it is possible? Because in 152.1, there is something called subscribers who is not a director, who is not intended to be director, they become a director, deemed director. Because the name is not mentioned in the AOA, then we told subscriber to the memorandum will become deemed director. They didn't have DIN number as of that time. So, they become a director deemed, then they applied for DIN, after getting the DIN, they intimate the company, then company will intimate ROC about this person is appointed as director, but backdated. Can you able to understand? So, with fine, they will be paying it. Next. Section 158. Director should write as DIN number, quote as DIN number, like how the auditor is quoting as a membership number. Wherever the auditor is signing as an auditor capacity, no. Like that, director, wherever he is signing as a director capacity, you should sign with the DIN number only. But most of the director, most of the auditor don't know that in finance statement, director DIN number should be mentioned. Because we are mentioning the name of the director and put director here. They are not, they are not mentioning the name, uh, DIN number. Please make sure, wherever the director is signing as director of the company, he should mention his DIN number. It is mandatory. Like how the company letterhead and invoice should have SIN number. Whenever data is signing, you should have DIN number. Okay. Like how the auditor is having the membership number. Firm na firm registration number. If you're signing as individual capacity, then only membership number. Firm's capacity, FRN number you should mention. The same thing, DIR, um, DIN number should be mentioned. 159, punishment. If you are violating 152, 155, 156, then you will be having punishment. Then 160. Okay. See. If I am not a retiring director, I want to get appointment in this company. Appointing other than the retiring director in the company. First, you should get deposits. 1 lakh rupees deposit will be given, but it is exempted for private company. You will get your deposit back, provided you got appointed. Or, how much percentage? More than 25 percentage voted in your favor. So even though you are not getting appointed, but more than 25 percentage is up in your favor, then your deposit will be reopened. Independent director, nominated by nomination intermission committee, need not pay this 1 lakh rupees. Any other director who is nominated by the nomination intermission committee, they need not pay this 1 lakh rupees. Government company also it is exempted. Then, one with section 161, 161 one, Additional director. Additional director means a person who is appointed by the directors. He should not be the person who failed to get appointed in the AGM. He should not be the person who got removed by the shareholder under section 169. Okay. So, only once in a company you can be appointed as additional director. Afterwards, you have to either get stand in the election, get yourself regularized by the shareholders by passing ordinary resolution under section 152 2. If a person is not doing that, then he cannot become additional director of the company one more time. Then, articles of association has to authorize you. Board of directors themselves can appoint by board resolution. It's not mentioned in the section as board meeting. It's board resolution only. That means, a circular resolution also possible. Okay. Then, section 161, subsection 2, alternate director, See, uh, the tenure of additional director and alternate director is too different. Additional director tenure is till the conclusion of, AGM. sorry, till the commencement of AGM, not conclusion, commencement. Auditor is conclusion of AGM, okay, but additional director gives only commencement of AGM or the last date on which AGM should have been held. Auditor can continue even though AGM is not held, but additional director cannot continue even though the AGM is not held. He should have retired by that ought to have been held date. Okay, alternate director 161.2, you can have one person as alternate director, that person should not be alternate director for any other director, a director himself cannot be acting as alternate director. So there are two things, director cannot be appointed as alternate director, alternate director for one person, alternate director is already alternate director, he cannot be alternate director for another director. So previously, director can be alternate director. That means that point of time he is having two votes. As a director is having one vote, as an alternate director is having another vote. 
Now it is not possible. So 161.2 says, independent director, alternate data should be having the same uh, uh, qualification of an independent director. Then, alternate director will be appointed for a person who gone abroad and not expected to return for a period of three months. And the tenure is till he comes back or his tenure, whichever is earlier. If he comes in to India, but not having any intention to stay in India, then he can continue as an alternate director. So it's not literally coming to India. It's like intention of being in India. Section 161.3, nominee director. A person can be a nominee director provided if the company has borrowed money from the banks or governments. Okay, and through an agreement, this person is appointed as a nominee director. He will be holding the office for a period of three years. He cannot be removed also. Disqualification under section 164.2 is not applicable for a nominee director. Okay. Section 161.4, cash vacancy director. Previously, the section is applicable only to public company. Now, after the amendment, the section is applicable to all the companies. Any person who got died or disqualified, no, generally, then we can appoint cash vacancy director by the board itself. Previously, it is not necessary to get ratified. Okay. Previously, the auditor, if he is resigned, if you are appointed within 30 days, another auditor, then it should be ratified within three months. But appointment of cash vacancy director need not be ratified. Okay. Now it is told it should be ratified. See, ratification has introduced in this section. Ratification as excluded from section 139. Appointment of auditors for a period of 5 years there, no. Previously, every year it should be ratified. That has been removed. But ratification has been introduced in appointment of cash vacancy director. So once we appoint a cash vacancy director, now shareholder has to be ratified. Previously, it is not necessary. <coughs> you should remember all these things because they may ask either in this exam or next exam. I don't know when they will ask, but they will ask this. Okay, in this following scenario, when ratification is necessary, when they make a, give a scenario. See, if I am the examiner, I will ask all the small, small things only. Because I don't know what you don't know. Okay, where you will miss, I know. I will ask only one mark, pocha, 39 la pocho. Okay, sometimes it will be in 59, sometimes it will be 39. See, this one mark plays a vital role only if you in 39 or in 59. In Nadupra, 45, 46, and all, they will not play. Okay. Then, okay, uh, section 160, keep all your doubts in writing once I complete because I am going somewhere else. I am not focusing when I am clearing your doubts. But I will clear all your doubts, okay, don't worry. <coughs> Example, just no over. Now, section 162, appointing director should be done individually. Okay, so each and every time when you are appointing director, you should write resolve that Mr. X and X resolve that. So separate separate resolution has to be passed. You should give opportunity to shareholders either to accept or reject each and every resolution. If you are appointing more than one director in a single resolution, then unanimous resolution has to be passed. Under percentage should be voted in favor. Even abstaining from voting is not counted as unanimous resolution. Whoever sitting in that resolution, they should vote in favor. That's called unanimous resolution. The consequences of this is they cannot get automatic reappointment under section 152 7A 7B. That is the consequence. That's all. 163. 163 is uh, by proportional representation. Okay. Proportional representation director means a person who is appointed by the shareholder. Generally, when the minority majority problem in operation mismanagement comes, this section will be used. So, not less than two thirds of the director shall be proportionally represented. That's all. That single line. Then 164. Disqualification. Here you have three subsection, disqualification 1, 2 and 3. See, if a person is of unsound mind or undischarged insolvent declared by the court, applied for insolvency, petition is pending. That means IBC, that only eight days time is there, no, that is pending. Or if a person is convicted for an offence involving moral turpitude or otherwise and sentenced for imprisonment, for a period not less than 6 years and a period of 5 years has not elapsed from the date of expiry of the sentence. 
provided if the person is imprisoned for a period of seven years, he is disqualified for life. If a court or tribunal vacates you from the office, then you have to disqualify. Means like, uh, if the court or tribunal says you are disqualified, then you are disqualified. If you are not paying your call money, and six months have elapsed, gone. If you are, don't have DIN number under section 152.3, then you are gone. Now there is an amendment. If you have violated under section 165, okay, so violation of 165 is having a place here. That means if I have more than 20 directorships, then I cannot become director of one more company or I cannot become director anywhere because I violated 165, maximum number of 20 companies, no, other violated. That has been inserted in the amendment. 164 2. 164 2 has two clauses A and B. Class A says not filing of annual accounts or annual returns for a period of three years continuously. Clause B says, I have not repaid the deposit or I have not paid the interest on deposits, not repaid the debentures or interest on debentures, not paid the declared dividend. And even after a period of one year, I not coming out of this problem, then I am disqualified. 164 subsection 3 says, private limited company can have additional disqualification. Okay. So, if a person is disqualified under section, subsection 3, then he is disqualified for that private company only. So it's not like I have general disqualification. So private limited company can tell my director should be an engineer, my director should be a doctor. So for that private limited company alone, you are disqualified. It has a proviso also. You can go for appeal. But you are disqualified under the section. The problem is you need not vacate the office. So appealing doesn't have any big escape from the disqualification. But appealing under this section will escape you from the vacation. Because in all the companies you have to vacate the office, no. But when you gone for appeal, you need not vacate the office actually. But you are disqualified to get appointed in some other company. Because one, so under section 164 subsection 2, the section starts with the word disqualification for reappointment. It's not like disqualification. So I cannot get appointed elsewhere. But section 167 says, if you are disqualified under section 162, you have to vacate the office. That is the biggest problem. But if you gone for appeal, then you need not vacate the office. Say, I will tell you, I have seen my directors itself, our company itself, when uh, the directors are disqualified for not filing annual accounts and returns, we are filing a writ petition with High Court. And a writ petition generally will get, within 30 days, they will hear it. Then, he is now qualified. Okay, he didn't become active. We are filing annual accounts and returns and all. So, there is a provision, may not be in the company's act explicitly, but in practically we are doing that that's why i'm saying it so it will, you have to spend somewhere around 30000 35000 rupees for writ petition you can approach any company secretary you can write this also you can write even though it's not in companies act write practically because when i am a student i generally not go by the books and all i always read ramaya okay none of you would have seen something called ramaya book it is 9000 page book okay a 9000 page book it's not like for students I used to read Akoni Shadats from Dolphy Dusosa. And I used to read, you used to read from Rawat, no, Rawat sir book. That is for students. But your partners won't read from this Paduka, uh, Guru Guru Padu, they will read from the taxman manual. Okay. They will read Ramaya books. Okay. Uh, Lexis Nexus publication. Previously it was Nag Badwa Nagpur publication. Some four big modules will be like this. It is called reference book. But content how to escape from this problem how to come out of this problem previously <coughs> now section 185 no previously it was 188 and 185 today it was uh, uh, 295 and 297 okay the most confusing and draconian section that means like related party transaction loans to related party problems you have to turn the business. the advocate officer have you seen no big big manuals will be there throughout the cupboard same our uh, company case reports will be there okay and it will be bounded sita raman company they will be binding it and it will be kept and the volume i don't know so i have to take that volume he will be referring and the case will so that's how i learned i never learned to pass the examination okay but knowledge sake i learned because passing the examination the problem will come in last six months of your articleship 
பட் இஃப் இந்த டூ அண்ட் ஆஃப் இயர்ஸ் ஆர்டிகல்ஷிப்பில் யூ ஹவ் டு என்ஜாய் தட் லா ஸோ ஐ நெவர் ரைட் தட் நோ கன்வீனியன்ஸில் பில் மிஸ்ஸிங் ஹவு த ஆட்டோ யூ வென் டூ டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் ருபீஸ் வேர் இஸ் த பில் ஆட்டோ எங்கேயும் பில் கொடுத்துருக்கு அண்ட் யூ வில் பி ரைட்டிங் வேர் இஸ் த ஆட்டோ பில் வவுச்சர்ஸ் ஆர் நாட் இன் க்ரோனாலஜிக்கல் ஆர்டர் ஓகே திஸ் வவுச்சர் ஷுட் ஹவ் கான் டு தேர்ட்டி ஒன் த்ரீ இட் செல்ஃப் பட் இட் கேம் இன் டூ ஒன் ஃபோர் ஹவு இட் இஸ் பாசிபிள் ஹவ் யூ யூ ப்ராப்ளம் பட் ஐ யூஸ் டு ரைட் திஸ் தேட் இஸ் டிஸ்குவாலிஃபைட் யூ கேன் நாட் கண்டினியூ நோ பொங்கல் ஃபார் யூ ஹவு கேன் ஹவு கேன் யூ செலிப்ரேட் தீபாவளி மணி ஸோ யூ ஹவ் டு சே டிஸ்குவாலிஃபிகேஷன் யூ ஹவ் டு கீப் அ பாம் ஓன்லி தமால் வெடினோ ஸோ இட்ஸ் நாட் லைக் ஊசி வெடி ஸோ யூ ஹவ் டு ரைட் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் லைக் தட் தென் ஓன்லி ஆடிட்டர் ஆல்சோ வில் ஹாவ் தட் கெத்து when auditors coming to the meeting when all your points are like no conveyance bill illa then auditors will feel ayyo like, enada what is this see i have to talk something to the uh, directors and where i can because of this i can increase my billing also if conveyance bill illa if and all then how the billings will be increased both people will be laughing then what you should write you should write something draconious you have to pay 50 lakh rupees fine 50 lakhs or turnover itself is 10 lakhs so you should write all these things to run this company at least one more new director has to be introduced because one director is already disqualified you know when new director is introduced in section 164 this amendment sir already two directors are disqualified we are appointing one more director in the company to file annual accounts because they cannot file annual accounts and returns this new director will also get the disqualification if he is not filing the annual returns within 6 months 6 months is the new time limit given for the new director introduced and this uh, point is not applicable for the nominee director and all okay so that is the thing then coming to section 165 what is the maximum number of directorship a person can hold a person can hold only 20 directorship out of which 10 is public company exclusion is dormant company because of amendment act so you can have more number of dormant company no issue section 8 company is already excluded foreign company it is excluded because of our interpretation it is not given in the section foreign company is excluded in it. there is no specific provision in the section because of our interpretation because company means company registered under the companies act that is the definition foreign company means it is not company under the companies act hence the company definition of foreign company will not be there so directorship in a foreign company is not counted in the 20 that is our interpretation okay most of the books won't have this kind of interpretation and all because we used to do all these things then uh, section 166 Uh, duties of directors you should not involve yourself in the conflicting situations and all and uh, whenever you have uh, any interest you should abstain yourself from voting you should do all work by yourself you should not assign your work delegation is possible but there is a uh, proper resolution has to be passed under section 179 we will be studying 179 at that time i will tell how to delegate the work so assignment is not to be done this is section 166 167 vacation of office if you are disqualified under section 164 you have to vacate the office If you are absent yourself for continuously past 12 months for all the board meeting you have to vacate the office if you are convicting for moral turpitude otherwise and sentence for imprisonment for a period of 6 months then you have to vacate the office but if you gone for appeal you need not vacate the office okay if court or tribunal ask you to vacate you have to vacate the office if you are holding the position in this company because of holding some other position in some other office and that's office ceased to operate then you have to vacate this office if you are not vacating the office if you are continuing then central government will ask you to go for jail also okay if all the director vacates the office then central government will appoint the directors or they can ask the company to close down this is section 167 section 168 resignation section 168 says if the director have to resign just give a letter to board of directors there is no need for approval and all just file a resignation letter if the company is filing dir 12 well and good and the company is not filing dir 12 then the director can file dir 11 and he can resign from the company dr 11 they used to previously they used the word shall now they use the word may so it's a amendment so it is not necessary to file dr 11 by the director but the company if they are not filing dr 12 they are disputing oh, you cannot go on then no, i can file dr 11 i can say escape director is liable till the date of resignation but is not liable whatever the company does later on okay so even for the past activities i am liable when i was in director then section 169 removal resignation la you should give reason for resignation okay generally mostly they will give personal occupation etc then removal removal la if i want to remove the director then again i have to give a special notice <coughs> i have to pass ordinary resolution for removal of director there auditor has given special resolution here director like this ordinary resolution at the same representation right to uh, represent and all is given that i should not abuse this position if he is abusing the position i can go to nclt i can get it exempted 
If he is not abusing the position, I should give opportunity of being heard and his representation will be circulated to the shareholders. Then, once that address is removed, there are three options to the shareholders. Either they can fill the vacancy in that AGM itself, or EGM itself. They can give to the board of director to fill as if a castle vacancy under section 161.4. Or they can design not to fill the vacancy itself. Let that, because the, there are so many directors, enough number of directors is there. There is no need to fill the vacancy itself. In case the independent director resigned the office, okay, independent director removal resignation. In case if there is a enough independent director, you need not refill the vacancy itself. For example, uh, there are two directors need to be appointed in the public company. No, already there are three directors, independent directors. Now one director resigned the office, okay, or one director I am removing the office. It is not necessary to fill that position itself if the ma mandatory minimum condition is satisfied. Understood? Ha? Then 170. Uh, members right to inspect the registers which is maintained under section 170 170 171 you have to read together 170 is KMPs uh, and directors shareholding register so whenever a company okay maintains that register 171 the shareholders can inspect the register okay if the shareholders are not allowed to inspect the register because we want to know whether the directors is doing any insider trading Okay, only if I know your shareholding changes, okay, then only I can understand whether there is insider trading or not. So, shareholders should be given option of uh, checking the insider tradings. So, if the shareholders is not allowed to do inspection, the shareholder can complain to ROC. ROC can do inspection and they can give the copy to shareholders. Shareholders, if they are allowed to do inspection, they can do two things. One is they can take copies or they can take extracts. Then 172, blanket penalty for this chapter. Now comes to the next chapter, 173. The next chapter is called meetings. Company should conduct four board meetings in annum. In the first year of incorporation, within 30 days, they should conduct the first board meeting. Thereafter, four board meetings, not more than 120 days time gap between two board meetings. For Section 8 company, it is half yearly one board meeting okay for dormant company small company and all half yearly one board meeting minimum time gap 90 days then what is the difference between the first and second section 8 company that minimum time gap for 90 days is not given but for dormant company low particular for dormant company and small company that minimum time gap they mentioned specifically but i don't know why they have not mentioned it in section 8 company alone okay Board meeting can be done in video conferencing also. Board meeting can be done anywhere in India or anywhere in the world also. It is not necessary to be in the, anywhere in the world they can do. Board meeting can be called even on the national holiday. So even today, you can have a board meeting. Okay. So today is October 2nd, you can have a board meeting because the restriction is only on the adjourned board meeting. Because if you read the barrack clearly, it is urgent board meeting should not happen on the national holiday that means you can call the board meeting on a national holiday so original board meeting can be in the national holiday so this may be asked in mcq then video conferencing board meeting certain business cannot be transacted in video conferencing so they can, can ask in mcq out of the four business any business okay uh, signing finance statements board report adoption prospectus discussion audit committee's recommendation merger amalgamation discussions this thing should not be happen in the video conferencing other than this anything can happen in the video conferencing you should understand the difference between video conferencing and circular resolution finance statement can be signed in circular resolution because i have seen many directors who are sitting in chennai one person is sitting in coimbatore we sign and we will send and he will sign kind of so that is called circular resolution adoption that is possible but video conferencing you cannot do it okay i'll tell you some business which cannot be done in video conferencing but where there is a physical quorum there, that business can also be done in video conferencing. This is the latest amendment to the amendment. Okay, so for example, physically quorum is there, okay, and people are signing it, or people are discussing it in the physical thing. At the same time, it is video conferenced, somewhere else, a person sitting, and they can do that. So physical quorum is there now, even the bis bis business which cannot be done in video conferencing can be done. Because there is a physical quorum. Okay, some other data is just seeing through video conferencing. Video conferencing should be dated properly and it should all recognition, uh, people presentation, things like participation should be recorded. It should be saved. Some problem, 
ஓகே என்ன பண்ணணும் கரெக்ட் ஆகிடும் இந்த வீடியோ கான்ஃபரன்ஸிங் வில் கெட் கரெக்டட் ஆர் இட் வில் பி லாஸ்ட் த கேசட் இஸ் லாஸ்ட் அந்த டைமில் சேஃப் திங் இஸ் யூ ப்ளீஸ் டூ இட் இன் த மீட்டிங் மினிட்ஸ் ஆல்சோ தட் மினிட்ஸ் ஷுட் பி சைன்ட் பை தோஸ் டேரக்டர் ஹூ அட்டண்ட் அட் த வீடியோ கான்ஃபரன்சிங் மீட்டிங் So, it is necessary to record a minutes, written minutes also. Just recording video conferencing, sometimes in future it will make corrupted. So, the court light will not be presented. So, please get it signed in the uh, physical form also. Minutes should not be backdated and all. It should be in chronological order. You know something? <laughs> Director's meeting should be numbered. Each and every meeting should be numbered. And it should be in continuous form from the date of incorporation. But what people are doing, no? Every year, they are putting first board meeting of this year. It is like first board meeting means the first first you have to conduct, no? So, it should be like 248th board meeting kind of. Okay, if you see the institute, council uh, 242 making, 243 meeting on the website and all uh, in uh, sh- sh- 6, class number 6 of uh, schedule 1, part 1. they will tell the website is now allowed because in meeting number 242 it is uh, been clarified by uh, council members abla in auditing you have studied no that means every meeting is subsequently numbered means like it is continuous numbering so minutes should not be backdated or you cannot keep on inserting the minutes because of that only we are not putting the numbers okay which minutes see who know which board meeting who knows etc so it's a convenience for us basically then section uh, 173 also says board meeting ah uh, okay next we will go to next section 174 quorum quorum is 1/3 or 2 whichever is higher quorum for section 8 company is 25% or 8 whichever is less subject to 2 interest director should not be counted for quorum but for private limited company interest director can also be counted for quorum because once 184 is exempted interest director should not part- participate in and the section is exempted for private limited company only for participation is exempted but disclosure is applicable even for private limited company okay so disclosure of interest is applicable mbb one you should give but participation is allowed so quorum for private limited company la even interest director can participate but forum for public limited company interest director should be excluded if more than 2/3 are interested then what is a quorum remaining or 1/3 is a quorum if all except one are interested then what is a quorum there is no quorum so director should appoint one more uninterested director then the original uninterested director the new uninterested director will form a quorum this is how you should answer then if there is no quorum in a board meeting the meeting will be adjourned to the next week same place same time if it is a national day then subsequent day then 175 circular resolution okay so uh, chairman will be drafting a resolution along with the back papers he will be giving to all directors who is eligible to vote only can sign in case one third of the director who is asking the chairman to conduct the meeting physically then the chairman has to conduct physically after every circular resolution it should be noted and minuted and signed in the next board meeting then circular resolution meeting circular resolution is not a meeting so it should not be counted in that four which is given in section 173 you should not do circular resolution for certain businesses which is mentioned in section 179 so when we when we study 179 you should refer to 175 also 176 is defect in appointment of the director will not make a act invalid defect in appointment may due to so many reasons a person <coughs> may be disqualified but without that we appointed him or the person who shouldn't have got appointed okay because he is not having din number etc but we appointed him immediately then uh, later only we came to know when you are filing some forms we come to know this person is actually not eligible to but he has given declaration under section 1524 without knowing that also see some people don't know that they are not ineligible they don't know basically okay we are writing examination no without knowing we don't know anything we are just going and writing examination after that we are feeling you know 20 da vandir auditing la 3 and 1/2 years i did article ship after the doing that also 20 only i got some people are th- having horns uh, as if i know everything people who are getting less than 30 in auditing they should actually mutti no dong 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 but the people will be very happy i know auditing instead only not giving mark even after giving 30 marks mcq okay 30 marks mcq kudutu 30 kilo vandadha na enna pandrathu we should only dong 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 nachino because of you know why over confidence just because of i will tell you people will go for fr class for four and a half months 
then again crash course for one week so somewhere around or 150 hours uh, 200 hours for class another 100 hours for self study another 100 hours for crash course so 350 hours auditing only 20 hours because auditing only 20 marks no fr only 350 marks so that is the reason iska people used to do that previously okay only 15 20 hours they will allot as if it is an optional subject totally okay ensure understood later and they now give an option that is a different issue see whenever you neglect one subject that subject will give you up okay so please understand if you give more importance to one subject yes obviously you should get exemption so fr i spent somewhere around 300 hours now i should get at least around 73 marks sfm i spent somewhere around 250 hours now i should get at least somewhere around 60 marks auditing you spend only 250 hours now then it will give only 30 marks so uh, proportionate only time proportionate basis tha. okay like fixed deposit interest only it will give you come back so if you spend more time in auditing uh, so you, you will get more mark in auditing i'm telling you seriously i'm telling you if you neglect one subject that subject will give you ca come again now section 176 uh, so if there is a defect in appointment of an auditor then sorry if an appointment of director acts done by him during the period the time which we don't know that he is disqualified or we don't know that he is having defect we don't we should not have appointed him so whatever act he has done that point of time it's allowed okay because doctrine of indoor management turkwan case law is there third party should not be affected because of your director disqualification how do the third party know that this person shouldn't have appointed as a director of this company and he shouldn't have transacted with us and we transacted we got some arrangement or agreement signed on our favor and uh, now the company is saying no 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 you shouldn't have appointed itself if you shouldn't have appointed you shouldn't have participated in the meeting itself you shouldn't have signed the agreement itself hence the agreement is void adding munjile gutte now so doctor of indoor management should be there protection of the third party so what the section says that this defect and all will not affect the whatever he has signed or whatever he has done during that period okay then 177 audit committee applicability same like independent director turnover 100 crores paid up capital 10 crores loans borrowing exceeding 50 crores audit committee la directors should be at least three three directors and majority shall be independent directors they generally they should have their financial literacy okay they should understand read and financial statement financial literacy should be there then what is the duty of the audit committee recommend the auditors appoint internal secretarial auditors see the independence of the statutory auditors okay then related parties adoption whenever there is a related party transaction the audit committee has to give approval mm. one crore blanket approval is possible there is an amendment here mm. when without audit committee's approval if some related party transaction has been happened it is voidable as the option of the audit committee okay in section 188 also there is an amendment if without the approval of directors if there is some related party transaction has been happened or without the approval of shareholders in certain cases if the transaction happened it is voidable option of the authority in they mentioned previously it is voidable option of the board now because sometime only board sometime only shareholder no so whichever person should have approved the transaction that approval is necessary okay next so audit committee they have now amended audit committee is responsible for implementing the internal financial control systems and all and they have to discuss with the auditors about the weakness in the internal controls Vigil mechanism implementation in case the company has borrowed more than 50 crores or they got accepted deposit even one rupee vigil mechanism has to be implemented then it is the duty of the chairman of the audit committee to protect the person who blow the whistle okay because next day he will not be alive no so it is the duty of the audit committee to protect them then 178 nomination remuneration committee 178 subsection 5 is stakeholder relation committee so 178 has two things so nomination remuneration committee same like indi uh, this independent director applicability uh, 10 for paid up capital 100 for turnover 50 for borrowings here constitution is three non-executive director one of them shall be a half or more shall be independent director in csr committee one of them shall be independent director in audit committee majority shall be independent director in nomination remission committee half or more shall be independent director csr committee even applicable for a private limited company audit committee is not applicable for private limited company nomination committee is not applicable to private committee in csr committee if it's applicable for a private limited company then i told one of them shall be independent director no that section that point is not applicable for a private limited company 
that means private limited company there is no independent director then one of them shall be independent director that point is not applicable for a private limited company can you able to understand so for csr committee sir csr company should have three directors no but private limited company itself will have two directors no the three is not applicable for a private limited company that means private limited company can have just two directors and there is no need for independent director in csr committee can you able to understand so if you you should remember it okay then coming to here in this uh, nomination remuneration committee nomination remuneration committee is applicable to public limited company three non executive director half or more shall be independent director idla uh, audit committee la majority should be independent director okay so half or more ku majority ku there is a difference please understand that okay next comes uh, nomination uh, what is the duty select the directors fix qualification train them give incentives okay fixed remuneration variable remuneration make sure uh, they are not going out of the company because they know all the secrets they should not go out of the company stakeholder ratio committee in case there are thousand stakeholders stakeholders here means shareholder plus debenture holder plus deposit holder or any other security holders put together thousand okay then if there is there are thousand people then come on stakeholder ratio committee should be supported what is the duty okay to address the grievances of the stakeholders okay kannire torthi vidna vela okay so uh, to address the grievances of the stakeholders next see if you see in lodr there should be reconciliation and all opening okay addition deletion during this quarter closing this reconciliation has to be done in lodr basically then come to next section 179. <laughs> 179 powers of the board of directors okay so the board only in the board meeting can do this powers so it's not resolution it's board meeting borrowings from the banks and finance institution which is restricted by 180 then you should read 180 what is the restriction which is given to 179 only if you read 180 with 179 you can understand the restriction the company should not borrow more than 100% of the pre pre securities, cap uh, securities premium pre reserves. Okay. So paid up capital plus pre reserves plus securities premium. If you are borrowing more than this limit, then they should ask special resolution from the shareholders. Apo, if it is given in section 180, then how to understand 179? Up to, up to this much, 100% you can borrow in board meeting. Beyond this, you should go to special resolution. This 100% which is limited, more than 100% which is limited in special resolution, it is not applicable to temporary loans it's applicable to only term loans so demand loan or temporary loan which is repayable in next six months and all it is board power itself you can do whatever you want there is no restriction of under percentage of paid up capital free or security premium so what is the restriction only for term loan there is a restriction so in the look you should have the understanding then um, uh, there's a call money okay when there is a partly paid up capital you can do call money you can issue capital okay then buy back out of how much percentage 10 percentage because 180 says more than 10 beyond 25 up to 25 it is 180 power okay so uh, what is uh, 179 power 10 percentage of buyback is 179 power so 10 percent buyback then <clears throat> you can give guarantees securities loans investments which is to be read with section 186 because 186 says 100% of paid free reserves and security premium or 60% of paid up capital plus free reserves plus security premium whichever is higher. So with that point you should read 179. Beyond that if you are giving special resolution. But that section is not in 180. That is in 186. So 179 to be read with 180. 179 should be read with 186 also. So borrowing is 180 po. Investments 186 you should go. Understood? Then you can do political contribution. Read with 182. Then appointment of KMP, senior management person, that and all is there in section 179. Out of this powers, what all can be delegated? Borrowings, investing, granting securities and investments can be delegated to a separate committee or MD or whole team director. So these three people you can, in case for like Reliance, there are so many branches. I can even give this power to branch officer, principal office of the branch also, I can delegate this power. Delegation is different, assignment is different. Assignment is prohibited under section 166, delegation is allowed under section 179. Delegation now proper, there should be a meeting and they should appoint a person and delegate it. Resolve that Mr. So and so is delegated this power. Abdin, they have to pass the resolution and delegate it. Understood?
Assignment means my work I am giving to some other person. Delegation means it is a work of the company which we have passed a resolution and give, given to some other person. He is in charge for that. Okay. Then section 180. Okay. Restrictions on powers of the board. See, if you want to sell or dispose of all or part of the undertaking, which is called substantially whole, where we have invested 20% of your net worth or from where you are getting 20% of your total income, then those things are called undertaking. You cannot sell or dispose of either wholly or substantially whole. If you are doing that, then you have to get special resolution. After getting that, if you are investing in somewhere else, you have to again pass special resolution. Then, so common decision received investing special resolution is required. Then, buyback beyond 10 up to 25 percentage. Borrowings beyond 100 percentage. Giving extension for time limit for repayment of the loan by the directors, special resolution. So these things and all, you should pass special resolution. If you are amending the articles and restricting the powers of the board, you cannot do backdated. You cannot do only, you can do only prospectively and not retrospectively. This you should understand. Then section 181. Contribution to charity. See, if you are contributing to charity, not more than 5 percentage can be contributed. 5 percent of the net profit of average of last 3 years. Contribution to political party, there is no restriction. But contribution to charity, there is a restriction. Now, 5 percent only you can contribute. Beyond 5 percent, if you want to contribute, board cannot do. You have to ask the shareholder by passing ordinary resolution only can do. But for contributing to political party, there is no limit. By passing board resolution, you can do how much ever you want. But they have given restriction. Two companies they cannot do. Government company and company which is incorporated for less than 3 years. Government company, if they think they want to contribute, that's all the gone case. Okay. All government company will be in last only. Then section 183, defense contribution. How much ever you want, you can contribute to arms fund. Okay. Then, see, charity you should not confuse with section 135. 135 is mandatory. Charity is optional. Okay. 135 is totally independent. 181 is totally independent. Okay. So the 2 percentage is mandatory. This 5 percentage is over and above the 2 percentage. Okay. Section 184. Disclosure of interest of the directors. Every director shall disclose his interest. In the first board meeting, Nietzsche participate. Thereafter, whenever there is a change in interest, you should give one more disclosure in form MBP 1. Then, we should not participate in the interest transaction. Okay. If he is participating in the interest transaction, then it is void. But that is not applicable for a private limited company. That is applicable only to public limited company. Okay, interest transaction is not part of it. Public limited company mode, it's applicable. Understood? Then 185. Loans to director. There is an amendment here. Previously, you cannot give to individuals as well as body corporates where the director is having interest. Now, by passing special resolution, you can give loans to body corporates. Please understand, there are two things. One is loans to individuals, another one is loans to body corporates. Individuals where the director is interested means directors, relatives put together. If the loans is given to individuals, even now it is prohibited. Loans, guarantees, book debts, anything is prohibited to an individual where the director is having interest. But loans to body corporate, that means I am director in X company, I am director in Y company. X company is giving loan to Y company. Okay, or book debt, anything. It is possible by passing special resolution. Previously, it is not allowed. Can you able to understand? So, direct, any person in whom the director is having interest means in another company where this company is holding 20, 25% of the voting or the common directors are there, etc. Please understand, 184 is different. 185 is different. 188 is different. 188 is transactions other than loan transaction. So, purchases, sales, property, those things and all, 188. Loans, 185. Interest, whether it is there or not, 184. I will tell you, when the shareholder, if a director is a shareholder of another company, director is there, if the same director is a shareholder of this company, holding more than 2 percentage of shares of this company, then he should disclose the interest. Okay? And he should not participate in the meeting. If 
this person's relative is a shareholder of this company okay so he is not relative director is director is not having any interest his relative is having interest then 188 la it may be covered okay but 184 la it is not covered because there may be a question in exam which says director's relative is a shareholder of this company he, 184 la whether it is covered on go it is not covered on 184 sir whether it is covered in 188 avan geta see if the relative is a director in this company then it will be covered if the relative is only a shareholder then it will not be covered in 188 also okay see in the mari you should know when it is related party when it will be covered in which section it will be covered 184 and 188 you should mention in 189 that is a register maintain under section related parties ku there is a register see this sections and all little confusing section so you should have the complete grip of this section this three sections 184 185 and 188 now in 185 so you should pass special resolution and you are allowed to do a transaction that's what there is an amendment that's that amendment coming to 186 investments and loans you can invest by way of subsidiaries also there are subsidiaries two layers of subsidiaries that is the maximum layers you can have but that is exempted if your subsidiary is in foreign and in abroad act you are allowed to have more than two layers of subsidiary okay that is a thing then if you are investing in india you know there are only few section which says unanimous board approval to be registered very very few section only says unanimous board resolution one of the section is section 186 just because of board resolution you cannot do investment unanimous board approval is necessary because board resolution means more than 50 percentage of the directors in the board unanimous board resolution means 100 percent of the directors in the board so only if 100 percent directors approves then you can do investment that too how much you can invest by passing board resolution 60 percent of the paid up capital free reserve security premium or 100 percent of the free reserve security premium, whichever is higher if more than that if you want to invest then you have to pass special resolution okay are you are following with me okay but you see many people they may not have the full grip of the subject no one month see for person who enjoy law whatever I'm saying no it will be so interesting for you for the person who are like no I am yet to study law it will be difficult for them to follow me because I'm telling small small points maybe out of 10 points you already know eight points but the two point is there no that is very important the extra two whatever you are learning here that is important because if you all already thinks like no i know this i know this then you will not follow the two point which i am telling extra you should keep your mind open then only you can understand the oh in the point this you can add see i'm i'm not doing anything new i'm doing only revision but in this revision one or two point you can add to your mind okay so please be vigilant please show interest okay uh, if i am seeing everything uh, i will be getting bored uh, because it is like one way communication <laughs> then which section we are in 186 uh, uh. see if you have taken loans from public finance institution very important public finance institution in india you know how many public finance institutions there only three public finance institution we have financial institution 300 go public finance institution only three we have lic uti idfc only this three we have if your loan is from these people and your loan is outstanding and you have not repaid the loan properly you cannot do investment for more than that specific percentage which is given whenever you are giving loan to your any other company you have to charge minimum rate of interest as per government treasury bond tenure if you are giving three years loan then you should at least charge three years thing okay 185 la when you give loan to a director i told it's prohibited but loan to md is not prohibited loan to individual person is prohibited but loan to md who is individual is not prohibited provided you pass a special resolution and this loan is like a employee loan if you give loan to an employee that 60 percent 100 percent limit is there no for counting 186 employee loan should not even count in that 186 amendment see i am mixing this two so loan given to md 
is exempted in section 185 also and 186 also because he is an employee. But 185 you have to pass special resolution. Can you able to understand? Okay, this is the issue. Loans to only one subsidiary it is exempted from 185 also, 186 also in that count. But it should be a wholly owned subsidiary. Can you able to understand? So two things you can have a common 185 and 186. Only MD, you know, wholly owned subsidiary. Okay. Then section 187. See 186. Whenever you give loan, no, they should use only for the principal business. That is very highlight because in Caro, in fourth point, this will be highlighted. Whether they followed 185 and 186 for giving loans and whether they have utilized only for the purpose for which the loan is obtained. Okay, and the, so we are linking with 143 subsection 11, paragraph number 3, read with paragraph number 4, class 4. Okay, to be link for now. See, when you are writing auditing, it is useful. See, auditing is nothing, it is an extension of law. Actually, it should be after the law, but it is kept before the law. That's the problem. After law, if you write auditing, I will tell you, you will score another 5 marks extra. Because law is not going to be helpful. See, once you write auditing, think you are an auditor. Don't restrict yourself in content. Write how your report will say. Draft report. So, over your answer, can you please write a report. If I am an auditor, how will, how will I report in this situation? Abdine? Give a report also. Basis of qualified opinion. Opinion paragraph. Abdine, you please write the two paragraph extra. Each and every answer, you please write that. Make sure the examiner is like keeping like this. Wow. Okay. So the thing is like, no, this is how we used to do in our 12th standard. Now we are thinking, ah, examiner will know this. Think examiner is a history teacher. If he is correcting our auditing paper, how will we do? Key path path karshamunwa. And your answer is nothing to do with the key answer. Okay. <laughs> because when I keep a test, no, each answer paper will be different. Vijita on the nala one. Vijita nani. Okay. Her answer paper will be number one. Next comes the Kirtana's answer paper. I still remember even five years or I still remember even my first student. Her name is Vijay Sri. Okay. So her answer paper will be totally different from the next answer paper. And each answer paper will be different. I only taught them, I only gave the dictation, I only told X, Y, Z points has to be written, but each one will be writing different answer. Then I asked them, why na? Terla sir, where sir na? Okay. See, the same answer, if you write one month before, and the same answer if you write one month after, your answer paper will be different. There is no control only. I'm telling, seriously, I'm telling you. There is no control. That is the problem because key answer is totally different from our answer. We are not restricting ourselves. Kadai tere kadai vasanam direction. Okay. Hmm. You know, remember, you know, sir, sir, one, one student yesterday after applying for RT and she sent me. Sir, I have written 29 papers, sir. But my mark is only 25, sir. Paper or mark? That is not the concept of institute. Please understand. Okay, she is saying, sir, MCQ life at least get 15 marks. And after writing 25 papers also, I am not getting even 12 marks, sir. What to do? See, institute and all, they have given some key answer. Examiner searching the key answer in your answer. Examiner is not reading your answer and appreciating. Wow, in my He is searching. So if you want to get some appreciation, then you should really prove that you are an auditor yourself. You know, see that pass I'm not really auditor. Nadia Pera thinking about the But the thing is, like, no, you should write as if you are an auditor. You should prove yourself. See, DT and all, I still say to many people, I don't know how I got 80 in DT, but I will tell the examiner this may not be the right answer. But this is also right answer. This may not be the answer which is there in your key. But this is also right answer. Because I will write case law for each and everything. Whether it is disallowable, there is a case law. Same thing, whether it is allowable, I will write a case law. So if your wife is patni, you should put mark. So that kind of, you have to torture the examiner. You should give, no protocol. Because if you say no, he should read the case law. I will write case law for everything. For 120 case law, I will write case law for case law. Paper full law, law is very auditing is very, or uh, income tax. I, I have written almost all the case laws. You people will not be knowing this uh, Bolivia Republic, Republic of Bolivia Exploration Syndicate Limited. How many of you know this? Republic of Bolivia Syndication Limited. Where it will come? 
ஆடிட்டிங்கில் தான் வரும் ஏன்னா நீ என் ஸ்டூடெண்ட் சொல்லிட்டேன் யாரும் சொல்ல மாட்டாங்க பார் ரிப்பப்ளிக் ஆஃப் பொலிவியா சிண்டிகேஷன் லிமிடெட் இஸ் அ லைபிலிட்டி ஆஃப் ஆடிட்டர் கேஸ் லா திஸ் கேஸ் லா ஹேஸ் டு பி கோட்டட் வென் எவர் திஸ் அ லைபிலிட்டி ஸோ மெனி பீப்பிள் வில் பி நோயிங் திஸ் டூ கேஸ் லாஸ் லைக் கிங்ஸ் அண்ட் காட்டன் மில்ஸ் கேஸ் அண்ட் எஸ்பி கேட்டர் சன் சன்ஸ் கேஸ் ஹவு மெனி ஆஃப் யூ நோ லண்டன் அண்ட் ஜென்ரல் பேங்க் லிமிடெட் கேஸ் எயிட்டி நைன்டி ஃபைவ் கேஸ் யூ நோ சம்திங் லண்டன் அண்ட் ஜென்ரல் பேங்க் இஸ் அ ஃபஸ்ட் கேஸ் லா விச் டிஃபைன் ட்ரூ அண்ட் ஃபேர் வியூ பட் விதவுட் நோயிங் த ட்ரூ அண்ட் ஃபேர் ட்ரூ அண்ட் ஃபேர் ட்ரூ அண்ட் ஃபேர் ட்ரூ அண்ட் ஃபேர் ட்ரூ அண்ட் இப்படி படிச்சுட்டு இருக்கோம் பட் வாட் இஸ் அ கேஸ் விச் டிஃபைன் ட்ரூ அண்ட் பிகாஸ் ட்ரூ அண்ட் ஃபேர் ஹஸ் நாட் பின் டிஃபைன் எல்ஸ் வேர் எங்கேயுமே சொல்லவே இல்லை தட் கேஸ் யூ ஷுட் என்ஜாய் த சப்ஜெக்ட் அண்ட் ரீட் If you ask how much you got in auditing, so many, you're going to talk about it. You're going to talk about it. So, auditing, I didn't score well. Because my handwriting will be the second person in my handwriting. Okay. Handwriting is so bad for me. That is why I never use the board. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. Because my handwriting is so bad. But I got 6-7 in law. I don't know how he got. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to learn my handwriting. See, For me, handwriting is my bad thing, but I used to give some presentation. See, there are so many people like boys, no? generally they will not write good. But boys generally, no? to attract the examiner, we used presentation. But I will not do presentation also if you say, then it will be very difficult. At least your handwriting should be good or your presentation should be good. Girls are going to be good, that's why they are going to be good. Some people, you know, Uh, born uh, with good handwriting enak la varave varad so if you are having very good handwriting make sure the examiner is not reading entire answer underline pannu idu mottu you should correct okay if you read na adu problem aidum if you read the papers and all what up you know whatever i have written not even 50% you have written but you have scored more than me see it's not like how many pages you are writing even less pages more marks i have seen so but no always have this mindset i have to impress the examiner i have to impress the examiner examiner vandittu unna lover nu nichukom okay so i have to impress the examiner this you keep in mind make sure you are getting more marks because you will not be attached with your paper okay one vacha anpa mudiyadu sir idu vandu or koli sir idukulla 20 koli mari so i cannot say sir in this only whatever is there no i have written here only read the sentence three times or four times you can understand what i am trying to say so i cannot attach you with the exam paper okay so whatever is there in the paper only uh, they will be correcting so try to explain that you know and you have knowledge under that you have to explain in this paper because they don't know whether you are a boy or a girl black or white okay we are president or sanna prime minister or sanna we don't know exam paper da so you have to impress the examiner in the 25 pages like you have to impress him and make sure first six question you impress him so much so whatever maximum or therik urna first phase okay and you should have a impression aha enna alaga edirukanga idu idella vaan edu paathen and the mari you should think examiner kaaga pidino in the first few papers la then whatever you write you will put marks don't worry see he is also human right okay if you see some other paper endha na idu no see he is also human being he is also maybe a family man already disturbed enough and you are disturbing him more those things come back see i just tell all this thing because we have to just go out and come back then only your reasoning capacity may be more maybe more now section 188 okay uh related party transaction related party see who are all related parties which is not given in section 188 it's given in section 2 subsection 76 and 2 subsection 77 it says father mother brother sister son daughter son wife daughter husband father including step father mother including step brother பிரதர் ஸ்டெப்பு சிஸ்டர் ஸ்டெப்பு சன்னுக்கு ஸ்டெப்பு பட் டாட்டருக்கு தப்பு ஜுப்பு ஜும் அந்த ஸ்டெப்பு வேணும் ஓகே ஸோ தெர் இஸ் நோ ஸ்டெப் டாட்டர் ஆஸ் ரிலேட்டிவ் சன்ஸ் ஒய்ஃப் இஸ் ரிலேட்டிவ் டாட்டர் ஹஸ்பண்ட் இஸ் ரிலேட்டிவ் நோ கம் பேக் டு செக்ஷன் ஒன் எயிட் எயிட் இட்ஸ் ஏஸ் ஆல் த ரிலேட்டர் பாடி ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் ஹஸ்ட் பி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அப்ரூவ் பை த ஆடிட் கமிட்டி சம் ரிலேட்டர் பாடி ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் ஹஸ்ட் பி அப்ரூவ் பை டேரக்டர்ஸ் ஓகே சி சாரி ஆல் த ரிலேட்டர் பாடி ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் பி அப்ரூவ் பை ஆடிட் கமிட்டி ஆல் த ரிலேட்டர் பாடி ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் பி டேரக்டர்ஸ் சம் ரிலேட்டர் பாடி ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் பி அப்ரூவ் பை ஆர்டினரி ரெசல்யூஷன் ஜென்ரல் மீட்டிங் that sum enna we will be telling it okay so mandatory na two one is audit committee another one is board of directors sir what are the transaction has to be approved by the shareholders in case if there is a transaction of say buying and selling purchase and sale of goods and materials keep it as a purchase of sale of services keep it as b purchase and sale of uh, sorry purchase and sale of uh, property you keep it as b leasing you keep it as c services you keep it as d a b c d a inventory goods and services goods and materials b property c leasing d services okay e is agency that means you are doing either by yourself directly or you are appointing another person to do this 
for you on behalf of you that's called agency so a and e that means purchase and sale of goods and material either directly by yourself with the letter company or letter party or through agent you are doing it then if that value is 10 percent of your turnover or under close future is less if it exceed that value then you should get ordinary resolution in the general meeting when companies act 2013 is introduced it was special resolution but later immediately within one year they change it to ordinary resolution b and e b and e means property you are purchasing and sell of property with your related party okay that related party can be either a company so for example who are all related party for a company for a company holding subsidiary associate joint venture directors kmps and their relatives or related parties so if i am doing any of this transaction with these people then that transaction is called related party transaction under section 188 which transaction is not covered under 188 185 185 is what loan transaction that is totally different okay other 185 la we told director ku a loan is prohibited unless it's a md okay remember all these things so if you are transacting with a related party under section 188 you have to take audit committee approval board approval certain transaction ku ordinary resolution and the certain transaction only we are studying now okay then so we studied a and e b and d c 100 percent 100 crores or 10 percent of the turnover or 10 percent of the net worth b and d irkla, that is uh, property 10 percent of the net worth or 100 crores c if a and e it is 10 percent of the turnover b net worth because b is related to property a is related to inventory inventory turnover property net worth leasing is related to both services it is related to turnover 50 uh, 50 crores previously it is 100 crores here and all it is under a b c is 100 crores service is multiple 50 crores or 10 percent of your turnover whichever is less okay so if your transaction is crossing this limits then you have to pass ordinary resolution in general meeting okay then section 177 la we already studied up to one crore audit committee can give omnibus approval omnibus approval means like you need not keep on asking i will give just take it aggregate uh, for one party okay don't ask questions sir please okay if i tell you enjoy the questions later then because no struck i do uh, where are we once 188 la uh, if there is an urgency transaction uh, you can get it later also that means within three months you can get it ratified if it is an urgent transaction if it is not ratified if you forgot to ratify it is voidable at the option of the authority to whom you should have got approved some people some resolution some uh, business you should get approval from audit committee and board of data so it is to be approved by both it is to be ratified by both it is voidable at the option of those people some transaction you should get ordinary resolution in the general meeting so it is to be ratified by or approved by these people or otherwise it is voidable of this option there is something called hold, holding officer place of profit if a director is getting more than the remuneration what is eligible for because remuneration is fixed under section 197 if you are getting more remuneration than what you are eligible for then it is called office or place of profit ordinary resolution in general meeting has to be obtained if you read section 197 they will tell if you are getting more remuneration then you should get ordinary resolution if you are wanting more remuneration than that you should follow schedule 5 otherwise there is something called special resolution those things has been linked with 188 okay then um 189 related party transaction whenever the transaction crossing a threshold limit of 5 lakh rupees you should write it in the register maintained under section 189 aggregate during the year it's not like single transaction aggregate with one related party if it crossing 5 lakh rupees you please write it in the register then 190 190 is whenever you are appointing a md there should be a contract with that person md whole time director okay? you cannot just like that appoint him there should be a contract with that person terms and conditions you should sign and you should appoint him then 191 loss of office 191 and 202 is two different section 190, 191 is loss of office of director 202 is loss of office of a md whole time director okay so if it's a loss of office of a director uh, how to calculate remuneration is not specifically given in this section but in 202 they have specifically given three years remuneration okay that is last three years average remuneration or unexpired period whichever is less okay so average of last three years multiplied by unexpired period or three years whichever is less this is the calculation which is given in section 203 so but the, the question is justice director not mention md or old time director how the compensation to be paid 
then you should read section 190 only if if you read 190 it says board board of director has to pass a board resolution then ordinary resolution should be approving this transaction but they never told how the calculation of compensation to be mentioned two people two time two situation la there won't be any compensation one is if the company becomes subsidiary another is 33% of the uh, shares uh, purchased by another person another company and because of that you are losing your office means there is no compensation subsidiary 33% in the cases la there won't be any compensation but in section 202 if you read they have given four to five situation where you won't be giving compensation in 202 they told amalgamation you are appointed in the amalgamated company resignation resignation from the amalgamated company then uh, if you are disqualified if you are vacating if you are gross negligent because of you winding up happens in this situation and all you will not get compensation in board room but the things are different in section 190 so you should read this section 190 and uh, 191 and 202 differently understood then we will go to section 202 section 202 <coughs> sorry sorry 192 192 192 says uh, non cash transaction whenever the company is exchanging some properties to the directors generally it is happening in the real estate company directors have some land here company have some land here but the company wants to accumulate the land in this area so if the director already have some land here they will exchange this lands with some other lands or car okay the company is having one car director is having one car they are exchanging this both the car has to be valued by the registered valuer then board resolution has to happen then shareholder has to pass ordinary resolution and approve it otherwise it is voidable the option of the shareholders okay this is also to be mentioned in caro last but two points will be there no adala you have to mention this then section 193 transaction with one person company if that sole owner is transacting with this one person company then there should be a written contract okay and this to be filed with roc within 15 days of the contract okay okay uh, if the sole owner is not uh, if the sole owner is not Uh, sorry if the sole owner has some more director sorry he is not a only director if is there is a some other director then the sole director with some other director the sole owner director with some other director so there is a board meeting see board meeting is not applicable for one person company when there is only one director but board meeting is applicable for one person company when there is more than one director so if there is a board of directors then come on tell me the board of director has to approve this transaction so there are two situation is the one important point if there is only one director that is the sole member if he is transacting with the company there should be a contract and it should be filed with roc within 15 days if there is a board of directors then this contract has to be approved by the board of directors then after approval only it should be filed with roc can you able to understand this 194 195 has been withdrawn from your syllabus because it has been taken out from the amendment act 2017 la they taken out from the total uh, company act itself then we go to 196 <coughs> appointment of md so what two is not there insider trading is not there then uh, derivatives is not there for you okay there it is future transaction is there okay now 196 silence silence 196 is appointment of md whole time directors a person should not be more than 70 years of age for md minimum is 21 maximum is 70 if you appoint more than 70 years of age then you have to pass special resolution amendment amendment says if you pass ordinary resolution but not special resolution ordinary resolution with central government approval then you need not you can appoint more than 70 years age also so either if you pass special resolution you can appoint more than 70 years of age or if you appoint an ordinary resolution plus central government approval you can have more than 70 years of age person as md md will be holding the tenure for a period of 5 years okay then section 19 196 la there is no remuneration they will say remuneration as person 197 mr1 has to be filed within 60 days okay see this form filing form dates uh, time limit for form filing also remember who know mck can be asked from that so i will, I will tell you uh, insured has sent me a mail few days before they are asking case studies for ca final corporate law case study for economic class that is that 6d subject they sent me a mail and they are telling we will give 1500 rupees for each case study we are sending which you are sending us so 
now the question papers are not just coined by the examiners alone the question papers can be coined by anywhere anyone in india who is a charter accountant so if i have seen one practical scenario in my company which is peculiar okay i will write in x y z name and i will give to institute and i will get 1500 rupees like that institute is going to get so many questions so from now on maybe in future onwards practice on online you cannot find any questions because it is already old no people sitting in their office and writing their own questions and they are getting remuneration from that sumar time la edhi uta the kumudam vasagan edhi pora mari poem now see some people are having liking towards that see whether it will come or not that's different issue 1500 rupees given to me no sitting in my office i can write one story uh, this happened in my company so from this case studies they are going to give two marks mcq see two marks mcq will be there no 10 two marks mcq will be there okay so you will have 10 one marks mcq and 10 two marks mcq maybe i don't know exactly in the ratio and and the 10 two marks mcq la they will give you a situation and they will write to uh, they will try to make you solve the situation and each option will be like similar very small difference okay and you will be caught instead will be like yes satya how do you know right now see after this protest and all in should do you think they are very happy ah huh? protest pandring la super first time protest huh? so which is say now one question paper la yeh nadana adi one check okay va thodu paapom thodu thottale shock adikum now i will tell you i don't know what type of question papers will be that time this time because you have rti you have so many things ah huh? so appa question papers eppadi irukano i think they will copy question papers from wherever in the world acca question paper na achiruva ipo solran par sfm question paper will be acca question paper okay ore question 20 marks setta saavu bora bora mari see because we have irritated the icci we have already irritated enough okay so how they have to turn back correct ah edhila na kelli na thodave mudiyadi and the mari they will ask we have to prepare ourselves for the worst case scenario enna vana kel see we should be tough enough correct ah why we have to pray that whatever i read should come you should pray i should read enough you should give me capacity to read enough correct ah why i should no i should i should have a selected studies or two c studies i should not pray like that because whatever you studied she would have left an option she will pray to vengada jalapati you will be praying to guru ayurappan okay whatever i study should only come okay let's go she will write whatever i study should only come let's go appo adu onnu theriyadu so 50 marks will be whatever you studied 50 marks will be whatever you left guru ayurappan will say ah whatever you studied came no yes yes it came but only 50 marks that i got can do but she she already paid to vengada jalapati so another way of my god only but so thing is like yes obviously it will be there so what you should pray is like no give me capacity to study 100 percentage okay he man mari prepare no that's how no you will become strong tough enough and no you should prove the examiner that you are brilliant enough prove pananu sir na some brilliant sir enna kelvi na kelunga viva va enadu it's not viva no it is you have to write in it okay you cannot think that you, you have written see after writing the paper please read your answer nee siripa enna da idu seriously i have seen some papers they will tell they across them they will tell sir i have written so much sir this institute they have not given me marks sir then i will write okay here and all you made mistakes na correct sir next time i will appo edhuk and across them kammi pannu okay see if i keep the answer paper and i will discuss the answer with you you yourself will feel ashamed i am telling you yes there may be 5 to 6 marks which you are deserving may be there okay but some question and all some mistakes which you have done முட்டிக்கணும் போய் எங்கேயாது அந்த மாதிரியெல்லாம் மிஸ்டேக் ஒன் பர்சன் இன் கேல்குலேட்டிங் சிஎஸ்ஆர் ஷி ஹாஸ் நாட் டிவைடட் பை த்ரீ இயர் ஒன் ப்ளஸ் இயர் டூ ப்ளஸ் இயர் த்ரீ இன்டூ டூ பர்சன்டேஜ் போட்டான் டிவைடட் பை த்ரீயே போடல அண்ட் ஷி சேங் மை ஆன்சர் இஸ் கரெக்ட் திஸ் இன்ஸ்டியூட் இஸ் நாட் கிவிங் மை மார்க் ஏன்னா சஜஸ்ட் ஆன்சர் அப்போ ரிலீஸ் ஆகல அண்ட் தே ஹவ் கிவன் சம் இது ஆன்சர் பேப்பர் தே ஹவ் கிவன் இன் அந்த ஸ்கேன் பண்ணி ஷி இஸ் நாட் ஈவன் நோயிங் த டிவைட் பை த்ரீ ஹஸ் நாட் பீன் மேடு அதை நான் சொன்னால் சி ஆனால் அதுக்கு முன்னாடி இன்ஸ்டியூட் ஷி இஸ் கோல்டு லெஃப்ட் ரைட் அண்ட் சென்டர் சி நோ ஒன் ஹாவ் பர்சனல் வெஞ்சர்ஸ் அகேன்ஸ்ட் யூ தே டோன்ட் நோ ஹூ யூ ஆர் தேர் மே பி ஃபைவ் டு சிக்ஸ் மார்க்ஸ் எஸ் தேர் மே ப்ராப்ளம் பட் அப்போ யூ ஷுட் ஹவ் காட் நைன்டி நோ நீ ஏசி நைன்டி ஏன் எப்படி சார் வாங்குறது ட்ரை ஃபார் இட் ஐ எம் டெலிங் யூ ஒன் பர்சன் காட் செவன் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் மார்க்ஸ் அவுட் ஆஃப் எயிட் ஹண்ட்ரட் 
சார் டென் மார்க்ஸ் கம்மியாக பார்த்துறோம் சப்ஜெக்ட்டுக்கு செவன் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் இஸ் லாஃபிங் ஹீன் இருக்கா அண்ட் இஸ் சேங் சார் சிஏ இஸ் நாட் ஈவன் டுவெல்த் டென்த் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் டிஃபிகல்ட்டின்னு அண்ட் லாஸ்ட் இயர் இஸ் பிரதர் ஓன்லி காட் த ஃபஸ்ட் ரேங்க் இ சேஸ் இட்ஸ் ஓன்லி லைக் டுவெல்த் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் நவ் இஸ் பிரதர் காட் த மார்க் இ சேஸ் சார் இட்ஸ் நாட் ஈவன் டுவெல்த் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் இட்ஸ் டென்த் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் சிரிக்கிறாங்க நம்மளை பார்த்து நம்மளை பார்த்து சிரிக்கிறாங்க ஃபெயில் ஆகிட்டாடா அசிங்கமாக இல்லை அப்படின்னு சி தட் மீன்ஸ் அப்போ எப்படி படிக்கிறாங்க பசங்க ஒன்னே நீ சொல்லுவா மக்க படிப்பா சார் என்ன வேணா அடி நீ ஒன்னால் அடி முடியுமா குட்டிக்கார கூட அடி சி த திங் இஸ் வி ஹாவ் டு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அப்ரிஷியேட் தட் சம்மோன் இஸ் டூயிங் இட் அண்ட் போத் ஆர் ஃப்ரம் சேம் இன்ஸ்டியூட் ஒன்னே கிளம்பி ஜெய்ப்பூர் போகாதீங்க சொல்கிறேன் ஒரு பேச்சுக்கு ஸோ ஐ எம் டெலிங் யூ பீப்புள் ஐ ஹவ் சீன் அ பர்சன் ஐ ஐ கேன் டெல் ஹர் நேம் ஆல்சோ ஹெர் நேம் இஸ் உத்ரா ஷி ஃபெயில்டு ப்ரீவியஸ்லி நெஸ் எஃப்எம் நெக்ஸ்ட் டைம் ஷி காட் நைன்டி எயிட் ஓகே ஒன் பர்சன் கால் சந்தியா ஷி ஃபெயில்டு இன் நிஸ்கா தேர்ட்டி நைன் நெக்ஸ்ட் டைம் ஷி காட் நைன்டி த்ரீ ஓகே பவுன்ஸ் ஆகும்போது சாதாரணமாக கூட எல்லாம் நம்ம ஸ்டூடெண்ட் தான் அதெல்லாம் சொல்கிறேன் நான் ஐ கேன் டெல் ஓப்பன்லி ஓகே உத்ரா இஸ் நோ ஒர்க்கிங் இன் பிடிஎஸ் ஆஸ் மேனேஜர் சந்தியா இஸ் ஒர்க்கிங் இன் யூஐ ஆஸ் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் அட்வைசரி டீம் ஓகே ப்ரீவியஸ்லி ஷி டிட் ஹர் ஆர்டிகல்ஸ் இன் டெலாய்ட் அண்ட் ஷி காட் ஃபோர் அண்ட் ஆஃப் மந்த்ஸ் லீவ் ஃபஸ்ட் அட்டம்ல ஷி பாஸ்ட் ஃபஸ்ட் குரூப் அண்ட் செகண்ட் குரூப்பில் ஷி ஃபெயில் ஒன் சப்ஜெக்ட் செல்ஃப் ஸ்டடி தான் இஸ்கா நெக்ஸ்ட் டைம் ஷி காட் நைன்டி டூ நைன்டி த்ரீயோ பவுன்ஸ் பேக்லாம் சாதாரணமாக இல்லை பிச்சைலாம் கேட்கல சார் ஃபார்ட்டி எத்தா பாஸ் அப்படிலாம் இல்லை என்னையா ஃபீல் பண்ண மாதிரி வரேன் வெயிட் பண்ணு அந்த மாதிரி சி தட் வெரி தனம் இஸ் ஆப்சன்ட் இன் அஸ் ஃபெயில் ஆனோடனே ஐயோ ஐயோ ஃபெயில் ஆகிட்டு வெரி நம்ம என்னையா ஃபெயில் பண்ண திருப்பி வந்து அடிக்கிறான் அந்த மாதிரி வெரி படிக்கணும் வெரி ஓகே வென் ஐ ஸ்டடி மை ஃபஸ்ட் டைம் ஒன்லி ஐ ஐ கிளியர் ஆல் மை திங் இன் ஃபஸ்ட் குரூ ஃபஸ்ட் டைம் இட் செல்ஃப் ஐ காட் செவன்டி ஃபைவ் டேஸ் லீவ் செவன்டி ஃபோர் டேஸ் தே கேவ் மீ லீவ் ஓகே வெரி நா வெரி அப்படி ஒரு வி நான் ஃபெயில் ஆனால் வச்சுக்கோ என் ஊர் சிரிக்கும் பிகாஸ் வாய் சாதாரணம் இல்லை ஊர் அதில் எல்லாத்தையும் ஒம்பூத்து வச்சுருக்கேன் எவ்ரி ஒன் இஸ் ப்ரேயிங் தட் கிருஷ்ணன் ஷுட் ஃபெயில் ஓகே எவ்ரி ஒன் இஸ் ஃபெயிலிங் இன் ப்ரேயிங் இன் மை ஆஃபீஸ் ஓகே ஓன்லி ஒன் பார்ட்னர் இஸ் இன் மை சப்போர்ட் பிகாஸ் அவ்வளோ பேச்சு பேசியிருக்கேன் நான் ரிசல்ட் வந்தோடனே கவலைப்படாதரா நெக்ஸ்ட் டைம் பார்த்துக்கலாம் நாங்கள் ஏ நான் ஏன் நெக்ஸ்ட் டைம் எழுதணும் நான் பாஸ் சரி தே டிசைடட் இந்த இந்த வாயாச்சு நீ எப்படி பாஸ் ஆகும்ட்டு சி வைராகியத்துக்காகவே வாழல நான் நான்லாம் வந்துட்டு வைராகியத்துக்காக அந்த மாதிரி டைமில் சி வித் மை ரிலேட்டிவ்ஸ் ஊ மாக் மை ஃபேமிலி ஓகே I will tell you, I, I, will, I will make my parents so proud, okay? Because generally status will come if you have money only, right? Okay, how good deeds, how much good deeds you are doing, no one knows. Status only with the money. So I should make my parents pride enough. If you want to make your parents pride enough, you can see your status. You can see your status. Then you can go to your parents and go to your parents. See, the thing is like, no, you have to prove. That's very good. You can see that. And convert all your no, very into positive thinking. ஐ ஹாவ் டு கெட் இட் எப்படி வராமல் போயிடும் போன தடவை ஃபிஃப்டி எத்தனை ஐந்து செவன்ட்டி எடுக்கிறோம் பரவாயில்ல யூ ஹாவ் டு கெட் தட் வெரி தனம் நார்மலே வேணாம் இங்கே வெரி வேணும் சி ஹவு இட் இஸ் பாசிபிள் டு கம்ப்ளீட் என்டையர் லா வித் இன் திஸ் டூ அண்ட் ஆஃப் த்ரீ ஹவர்ஸ் பாசிபிள் நான் நினச்சேன் பாசிபிள்ன்ட்டு உங்களுக்கு கொடுத்துட்டு இருக்கேன் நீங்களும் வி ஷுட் ஆல்சோ டூ லைக் திஸ் ஓகே கம் பேக் செக்ஷன் ஒன் எயிட்டி ஒன் நைன்டி செவன் ஒன் நைன்டி செவன் சி ரெமினரேஷன் ரெமினரேஷன் இஃப் யூ ஹாவ் ஒன்லி எம்டி ஹூ இஸ் டேக்கிங் ரெமினரேஷன் இட் இஸ் ஃபைவ் பர்சன்டேஜ் MD plus all time directors it is 10 percentage MD plus all time directors with directors it is 11 percentage only directors it is 3 percentage MD plus directors it is 6 percentage and you can increase this percentage to 11 provided you pass a ordinary resolution if this percentage is not enough for you then you have to go to schedule 5 and you can take in a effective capital remuneration okay so effective capital means what sir effective capital means long term funds employed in the company that means share capital plus debentures plus deposits okay uh, plus long term borrowings minus long term investments this is called effective capital and they have given you four slabs negative to 5 crores 5 crores to 100 crores 100 crores to 250 crores more than 250 crores negative to 5 crores it is 60 lakhs 60 120 சிக்ஸ்டி எயிட்டி ஃபோர் ஒன் டுவெண்ட்டி மோர் தேன் டூ ஃபிஃப்டிக்கு ஒன் ஒன் டுவெண்ட்டி ப்ளஸ் ஜீரோ பாயிண்ட் ஜீரோ ஒன் பர்சன்டேஜ் மோர் தேன் டூ ஃபிஃப்டி ஓகே அண்ட் இஃப் யூ பாஸ் ஸ்பெஷல் ரெசல்யூஷன் இட் கேன் பி டபுள் ப்ரீவியஸ்லி தர் வாஸ் சென்ட்ரல் கவர்மெண்ட் அப்ரூவல் நெசரி பியாண்ட் த ஸ்பெஷல் ரெசல்யூஷன் நவ் த சென்ட்ரல் கவர்மெண்ட் ஹஸ் பின் ரிமூவ் செக்ஷன் ஒன் ந
For example, FEMA, I have gone for imprisonment, I have sentenced for imprisonment in some other IPC, etc. He cannot become MD in the company because Schedule 5 restricts it. So, we know Section 164, but Schedule 5 is restricting something else also. Because Section 164 says, a person who is convicted for offence involving moral turpitude or otherwise. Or otherwise means only Companies Act offence. But Schedule 5 says offence under any other act also. If you read Schedule 5 in the first two lines itself, so many acts have been mentioned. So central government approval pannada, you can have an MD who has just done some offence and come out of it. Understood? He can become director but he cannot become MD unless otherwise central government approves it. This question may come in MCQ. Which of the following director we disqualified become MD? That's offence like some other FEMA, SEBI, some offence will be mentioned. Okay. These are all minute things. Then, uh, if you have uh, taken extra remuneration, you have to reimburse it. There is an amendment, within two years you have to reimburse it. Okay. So, recovery of remuneration is there. No. Now, they have not mentioned what time you should receive it. Now, they mentioned two years within which you should reimburse it. Okay. Wave office allowed by passing special resolution. Okay. Now, section 198, net profit computation. They will not ask you to compute net profit and all. They will give you net profit in your uh, question paper itself. 199. Recovery of remuneration. Sir, just now we studied 197. Then why 199? 199 is recovery of remuneration which you have received in the previous year. 197 is recovery of remuneration in the current year. So 197 say, 197 is the current year. Extra remuneration what you paid you should recover. 199, in case if I am revising the financial plan under section 130 or 131, extra paid remuneration has to be recovered. Can you able to understand? So there also the same timeline is given. Now, section 1, 200. 200, 201, it's now redundant because both are central government approval only for remuneration, etc. Now, central government itself is not there. It means like central government approval itself is not there. So, you not study that. Then, we'll go to section 202. 202, just now I completed compensation for loss of office of MD. So, I told how to calculate the compensation. Unexpired period or three years, which is less, multiplied by average remuneration, what you earned in the last three years. Um, who and all will not get this compensation? Uh, amalgamated companies director, a person who is resigned from the amalgamated company, disqualified person, vacated person, or uh, because of you only winding up comes, those things and all. Or if you resigned uh, voluntarily, you will not get any commendation. Section 203, KMP, appointment of KMP. When KMP needs to be appointed? When KMP is applicable for the company? Listed company mandatory, public company having paid up capital 10 crores. But one of the KMP who is called as CS, Okay, CS KMP alone, 5 crores, it is not 10 crores. Paid up capital 5 crores on the channel, KMP of CS is applicable. Because Rule 8 says this 10 crores, but Rule 8 yen on okay, in the appointment of uh, other it says what? 5 crores for CS. So, there are 3 slab A, B and C. You have to appoint 1 out of A, 1 out of B and 1 out of C. But B and C is flat, CS, CFO, that's all. But AK you have four options, CEO, Manager, MD, in their absence, whole time director. So in the question they will ask, as per section 203, which of the following person has to be appointed? Or they will tell, uh, three things they have given. For example, the company has CS, the company has uh, CFO. Okay. Or they will tell, the company has CEO, the company has uh, CS. Which of the following person has to be appointed? Then you should write what? Okay, so A, CEO, MD, whole time director, manager. Out of this four, you have to appoint one. Then mandatorily you should appoint CFO and CS. So this two is mandatory and out of this four, you have to choose one. So they can give you an option like this. They will give you this two. Any of in the four, they will tell two and they will tell one from here. Then they will ask you to choose from one, two and three. You have to choose this one. Because in the rental already, the four lay they have enough people. And in the rental mandatory, they have one. This alone you have to choose now. So it can be either CS or CFO kind of. So these things and all they will give you in exam, I will tell you. Then one KMP is a full-time employee. So he cannot be KMP in more than one company. But if that company is a subsidiary, with that approval of both the companies, I can be a KMP of this company and the subsidiary company. But there is one more exception. By unanimous board resolution, I can be KMP in one more company. 
So I can be came in how many companies totally? Three, three companies. Holding company, subsidiary company, one more company where they have passed board resolution in both the companies. Can you able to understand? In case KMP got a vacancy, it should be filled within six months. KMP vacancy has to be filled within six months. But this section is not applicable to government company. Now, we'll go to next section. Section 204. Bigger companies to have company secretary or audit. Paid up capital 50 crores or more. Turnover 250 crores or more. CS, practicing CS has to be appointed and to do company secretary audit. He has to give a report and it should be, okay. Uh, he should also mention that uh, qualification and all. He will be mentioning companies act compliances, then registers whether you are maintained properly, minutes book, etc. 205 is duty of company secretary, who is the company secretary appointed in session 203. Okay, just now we studied, no, on the 203 or company secretary duty is given in 205. Maintain minutes book. Uh, main, make sure that the company's compliance has been complied with, minutes has been properly conveyed, etc. Those things. But if there is any violation, the company secretary cannot be arrested alone. Okay, he should be arrested along with the board of directors. So, board of directors cannot escape saying, ah, company secretary is there, sir. Another thing. So, company secretary along with the board of directors are equally responsible. With this, we complete this chapter. Then we will go to the next chapter. 206 Inquiry. Technical scrutiny. Okay. In case ROC wants to do any technical scrutiny, they can do technical scrutiny. They can find any abrasion. Then they will give you show cause notice. They can ask past and present employee to come and give the okay explanation. In case if they find fraud, they will write it down and they will go to the next step. Next step is in inspection. It's not investigation. It's inspection. They will come and see your office. New rule 10A has been ordered for inspection. Okay. Whenever a company is incorporated. As per 10A, the comp uh, ROC and some person will come and see the company. That is the reason now board is mandatory. Vasala, you should have a board. Uh, form INC 22A, Abdina, there is a form where you should uh, take a photograph of the board along with the directors and you should file it with ROC. Now, so uh, as per rule 10A, they can come and do inspection whether there is a building, whether you are there or not. Because so many companies are paper companies. In Kolkata, 22 companies has been registered in the name of police station. Okay. <laughs> police station address supported, 22 companies has been registered. I don't know how they did it. And they got GSC certificate also. That's the highlight. <laughs> so, while doing investigation only, it means like inspection only, they are knowing all those things. Okay. Now, so uh, in inspection, they will see whether the company is existing and the books of accounts they will ask. They will see uh, books of accounts. They can fix some uh, papers or those things like bookmark basically. And they can take a Xerox copy of it. Okay. But they, they won't do anything more than that. They will sit, come and sit. They will take a, uh, they, they will not interfere in your normal business. They will sit in the office. They will ask you to send the books of accounts. They will just see and go. 208, la, after seeing all those things, now they have to write a report to central government. Okay, because central government should allow me to do investigation. I have to go and take the books of accounts, etc. So I will write a report that uh, some more things has to be done in this company because they are doing something fictitious. Then under section 209, you have to go and do search and seizure. 209 is different, 220 is different, okay. 220 is 209 almost similar, but it's different actually. So ROC is doing search and seizure with taking magistrate approval. See, whenever you are doing search or seizure, no, you have to take the magistrate approval, okay. Because ROC don't have that power of taking it alone. Only with approval of magistrate, you can do that. And whenever you are going for investigation, like search and seizure, you should go after the sunrise, sunrise and before the sunset. So 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. basically. After sunrise means 5 30 also sunrise is there. But okay. Then uh, section 210. Central government has the right to do investigation. Central government generally on asked by the shareholders by passing special resolution or so motto or on the complaint of creditors, they will appoint a person to do investigation. 211 establishing SFIO. Morada Sanmo Armo Morada and Ramai, serious fraud investigation officer will be set up. That person will be having qualities of uh, information technology, banking, finance, those areas, and he will be having a joint secretary rank. He can arrest a person even without warrant. 
ओके सो टू ट्वेल्व इन्वेस्टिगेशन यू कैन अरेस्ट अ पर्सन ईवन वितउट वारंट बट थ्री पीपल कैन गेट बेल जनरली इट इस कॉल नॉन बेलबल अफेंस विच इस कॉल काग्निसबल अफेंस बट इन इंडिया थ्री पीपल कैन गेट बेल एंड विच इस आलसो बीन टोल्ड इन नेर कौन पर्वे बट अजित कुमार वुमन कैन गेट बेल ओके वुमन सिख पर्सन एंड जुवीन आइल कैन गेट बेल ओके कमेंट मी हू आर थ्री पीपल कैन गेट बेल वुमन सिख पर्सन एंड जुवीन आइल कैन गेट बेल ईवन दो दे आर अरेस्टेड इन नॉन बेलबल अफेंस ओके दट इस द रीजन आल ओवर एम एल एस हूस्ट बी नो उड़े कोर्ट हास्पिटल पे पत्पांग बिका बेल को बेसिकली नेक्स्ट सेक्शन टू थर्टीन इन्वेस्टिगेशन बै एनसीआर इफ वन टेन और हंड्रेड विच एवर इस नंबर और वन टेन आफ द पर्सन हू हेविंग ओटिंग पवर इन दैस कंपनी हेविंग शेर कैपिटल वन टेन आफ द शेर कैपिटल और वन फिफ्त आफ द ओटिंग पवर इन दैस कंपनी नाट हेविंग शेर कैपिटल ओके सो वन टेन और हंड्रेड विच एवर इस नंबर वन टेन ओटिंग पवर और शेर कैपिटल इन दैस कंपनी हेविंग शेर कैपिटल वन फिफ्त दट इस ट्वेंटी पर्सेंटेज प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड वन फिफ्त इस मोर दैन वन टेन्त सो मेनी पीपल आर थिंकिंग वन फिफ्त मीन फाइव पर्सेंटेज हाँ वन पर्सेंट मीन वन फिफ्त मीन ट्वेंटी पर्सेंटेज ओके इतना तरीके प्राब्लम वो दिस अप्रेशन मिसमेनमेंट दिस प्राब्लम अप्रेशन मिसमेनमेंट ना इतना वन टेन वन फिफ्त इश्यूड कैपिटल इस वन फिफ्त पीडअप कैपिटल दे आर होलिंग वन टेन उड़े ना पया इश्यूड कैपिटल दे शुड होल्ड इनडा वो डा ट्वेंटी पर्सेंट वा डा सर इश्यूड कैपिटल टेन पर्सेंट शुड होल्ड सर ते हेविंग डा सर ईस हेविंग ओनली वन फिफ्त सर फाइव पर्सेंट अरे वन फिफ्त मीन ट्वेंटी पर्सेंट आम सो कैलकुलेट ये ला एक्साम दिडी वन प्लस वन कटा वन प्लस वन अयो कोरम कटा इन लवन एवं पया सर टेंशन करेक्ट ना इतना पड़ा वि 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 प्िपेड बट टेंशन वि विल पुट रांग नंबर वन नयटी टू की टू नयटी टू एव ओके वाट इस टू नयटी टू नो वन नो Let the examiner read and come. Huh? Anyway, I am sorry. I am going to study tomorrow. Next, come. So, section two uh, two thirteen says NCLT investigation. NCLT will be appointing an officer to do investigation. Generally, that person should be individual. Whenever investigation is carried on, you should deposit some money because some minimum amount NCLT should have. No, so up to twenty five thousand rupees. It will start from ten thousand, ten, fifteen, twenty five thousand rupees. They will collect based on the turnover of the company. If The person in the company is proved guilty. You will get back your deposit. It's like a deposit only. Okay. And who will be appointed for doing investigation? Only individual. No body corporate or a firm can be appointed. Only individual will be appointed for doing investigation. After doing investigation, they will give you a report and all. Okay. Based on that, yeah, central government will take action. But before that, two eighteen no section okay, which says. Um, In employees who cooperate in investigation has to be protected because they will be de-promoted or they will be sent out of the company. No, so it is necessary for the tribunal uh, before removing the employee, the company should ask the tribunal's permission. But the problem is if the tribunal is silent after 30 days, keep silent. If the tribunal is silent for 30 days, then it is deemed approved that the employee can be removed. Company can go for appeal if the tribunal is not giving the approval. Employee cannot go for appeal, but in some such transfer, institute such transfer itself, they told employee can go for appeal within 30 days by paying thousand rupees in the court. And the case like there, am preethan or case, and the, and the case means and the, and the question there, am preethan or court. That answer is wrong. I will tell you even today, RTP 2019 November la there is two wrong answers there. Okay, adal ondu one wrong ondu the uh, 90 percent of approval is necessary. Majority in numbers and 90 percent approval is necessary for compromise. No answer. Look, 75 percent is not the answer. Our 90 percent got it wrong. Why they got confused? I will tell you. If 90 percent of the creditor approved the transaction, there is no need for meeting itself. No, there is a provision. Okay, I would have sent this in my uh, important question which I have sent recently. So many people are getting my important questions, but some people are not getting it. If you are WhatsApping, I will I, I will do that. There are two, three questions which is wrong. One question is not. Our team, like, three questions are wrong. I have seen that. See, while going through only, we will be seeing that. No. Ah, uh, another transaction. What about whether uh, capital account transaction? Another question. I am saying that. No question. Uh, insurance. Whether it is a capital account transaction, current account transaction. Get it? Insurance is a capital account transaction under Schedule One. But in our team, we would have given. No, it's free. Huh? Insurance free. You can do anything because it is uh, exempted from that. I mean, border pa. 
இன்சூரன்ஸ் இஸ் அ கேபிட்டல் அக்கௌண்ட் ஈ கோ டு ஆர்பிஐ சைட் ஒன்றும் இல்லை ஜஸ்ட் டைப் டேக்கிங் இன்சூரன்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் அப்ராட் கம்பெனி ஜஸ்ட் கூகுள் இட் ஓகே ஆர்பிஐ வரும் அதில் கேபிட்டல் அக்கௌண்ட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷனும் அதில் ஷெடியூல் ஒன்று வரும் அதில் ஹெச் பாயிண்ட்டில் இன்சூரன்ஸ் இஸ் தேர் டேக்கிங் இன்சூரன்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் அப்ராட்னு இருக்கும் கிளியர்லி இட் இஸ் கேபிட்டல் அக்கௌண்ட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் பட் இன்சூரன்ஸ் ஏஸ் நோ நோ ஃப்ரீ அப்போ நான் பார்த்தேன் ஒய் இன்சூட் இஸ் சேங் லைக் தட் இஃப் யூ கோ டு த ஓல்ட் ஸ்டடி மெட்டீரியல் பிஃபோர் எல்ஆர்எஸ் ஸ்கீம் பிஃபோர் டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபிஃப்டீன் பிஃபோர் எல்ஆர்எஸ் ஸ்கீம் இஸ் பின் இன்ட்ரூஸ் அதில் ஒரு ஒரு ஐட்டமுக்கும் தெரு இஸ் அ லிமிட் ஒன் லேக் ஃபிஃப்டி தௌசண்ட் ஒன் லேக் டென் தௌசண்ட் டென் தௌசண்ட் ஃபைவ் தௌசண்ட் தெரு இஸ் அ லிமிட் அதில் இன்சூரன்ஸ்க்கு இதை மென்ஷன் ஃப்ரீ தட் இஸ் தெர் இஸ் நோ லிமிட் ஃபார் இன்சூரன்ஸ் பட் ஆஃப்டர் எல்ஆர்எஸ் ஸ்கீம் இஸ் இன்ட்ரூஸ் இது என்டயமே ஸ்கிராப்டு நியூ திங் ஹஸ் பின் இன்ட்ரூஸ்டு பட் ஸ்டில் வி ஆர் காபி பேஸ்டிங் யார் யார் எழுதினாங்கன்னு தெரில கடவுள் தான் வச்சோம் பட் இந்த சேம் கொஸ்டின் தி ஆஸ்கின் எக்ஸாமால் வச்சு செஞ்சுருவோம் பிகாஸ் பியூஎஸ் இஸ் ரிலீசிங் ஆர்டிபி எக்ஸாமினேஷன் கமிட்டி இஸ் டோட்லி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் இன் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் கீ ஓகே த ஆன்சர்ஸ் வில் பி டூ ஆர் த்ரீ ஆன்சர் ஃபார் த சேம் கொஸ்டின் தட் இஸ் நத்திங் டு டூ வித் யுவர் சஜஸ்ட் ஆன்சர்ஸ் தட் இஸ் அ ரீசன் வென் சம் நார்த் இண்டியன் ஃபேக்கல்டிஸ் ஆர் கரெக்டிங் வித் சஜஸ்ட் ஆன்சர்ஸ் சஜஸ்ட் ஆன்சர்ஸ் ப்ரிப்பேர்ட் பை பியூஎஸ் நாட் பை எக்ஸாமினேஷன் கமிட்டி எக்ஸாமினேஷன் கமிட்டி இஸ் டோட்டலி இண்டிபெண்ட் தே ஆர் கீ தே வில் நாட் ரிலீஸ் ஸோ இட் இஸ் பியூஎஸ் ஹூ இஸ் கிவிங் சஜஸ்ட் ஆன்சர்ஸ் இட் இஸ் நாட் த எக்ஸாமினேஷன் கமிட்டி இஸ் கீ விச் இஸ் கிவன் டு யூ சஜஸ்ட் ஆன்சர் இதுவே தெரியல நிறைய பேருக்கு okay i have seen the key because i went for some paper checking we cannot take xerox and all there should be a declaration given that we are not taking any xerox and all i have seen the key i have i've checked the papers enakku 25 rupees per paper kudutanga paper check pandradhu correct pandradhu illa check pandradhu correction is different checking is different each and every sub point ku whether you are putting mark on there is a paper checker 1000 rupees conveyance 25 rupees per paper ku paper checking appo i saw the key each answer will have two or three answers you can write like this you can write like that you can write it this on the marla suggest answer you cannot see only okay so examination department is totally different suggest answer is totally different so you if you are correcting with the suggest answers adha adala nariya pay theriyave theriyadu avanga enga paper checking la poi irupaangala iniki pass panna online class edukka aarambichitaanga okay see i will tell you i will not take class from morning to evening i know what i'm many people know that i'm i'm a full time consultant and a practicing person i cannot take morning to evening class but today who is getting students you know morning to evening who is taking class because you want today marriage tomorrow pregnancy you want that kind of person okay two months la i should pass and and the slow and the process you are not enjoying i will i will daily i will teach for two hours per day nariya perku theriyum whoever is my student know in and out of company sir they will tell because first two hours you should listen in the class then go home and read two hours then come to the next class today i can complete the entire company sir in two and a half hours யாருக்கு தெரியும் உங்களுக்கு புரியுதானே தட் இஸ் அ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் திங் சி ப்ரீவியஸ்லி ஐ யூஸ் டு டேக் சாட்டர்டே சண்டே ஃபுல் டே கிளாஸ்லாம் எடுப்பேன் அந்த மாதிரி டைம்லலாம் கூட்டம் வரும் நிறையா ஒரு ஐ திங்க் ஓ டூ இயர்ஸ் பேக் வென் ஐ எம் டின் ப்ரீமியர் அகாடமி ஐ வாஸ் டேக்கிங் ஃப்ரம் மார்னிங் சிக்ஸ் தேர்ட்டி டூ ஆஃப்டர்நூன் ஒன் ஓ கிளாக் அந்த கிளாஸுக்கு கூட வி வி ஹேட் சோ மெனி ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் பட் வென் ஐ ஸ்டாப்ட் ஆல் தோஸ் திங்ஸ் அண்ட் டேக் ஒன்லி த மார்னிங் கிளாஸ்னோ மை ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஸ்ட்ரென்ஸ் கேம் டவுன் டு சிங்கிள் டிஜிட்ஸ் நோ ஒன் ஒன்ஸ் தட் ஸ்லோ ப்ராசஸ் அண்ட் ஆல் இன்றைக்கி ஐ வில் கெட் மேரிட் டுமாரோ எல் பி ப்ரெக்னென்ட் டே ஆஃப்டர் டுமாரோ ஐ ஷுட் கிவ் பர்த் டு த சைல்டு அவ்வளோதான் நெருப்புனா சுற்றணும் அந்த மாதிரி தான் பீப்புளாக இருக்கு சார் சீக்கிரம் சார் இப்போ முடியும் அப்போ என்ன டூ அண்ட் ஆஃப் ஹவர்ஸ் படிச்சிங்க டூ அண்ட் ஆஃப் இயர்ஸ் என்ன படிச்சிங்க டூ அண்ட் ஆஃப் இயர்ஸ் வாட் யூ டிட் எல்லாருக்கும் அந்த லாஸ்ட் த்ரீ மந்த்ஸில் ஐ ஷுட் பாஸ் திஸ் இஸ் த ப்ராப்ளம் பீப்புள் ஆர் வேஸ்டிங் அனதர் டூ இயர்ஸ் இன் ரைட்டிங் இன்க்ளூடிங் மை ஒய்ஃப் ஐ எம் டெல்லிங் யூ மை ஒய்ஃப் இஸ் ஆல்சோ ரைட்டிங் சிஏ ஓன்லி ஃபார் பாஸ்ட் சிக்ஸ் இயர்ஸ் ஸோ see for people no they they are wasting their time because they didn't properly spend that three months properly means like you know one year before you should plan the studies okay daily you should go for class morning class then article ship introduce whatever you study in the morning in the article ship adu na inga issue but when you are doing a sole proprietor artist for last two years then what you can implement company sir and you should choose the right person So choose the right company where you are working even nowadays people are asking stay fund 10000 kudukri appo dhan work pannuva see if a company is having so super audits they will not give you more stay fund they are telling here you can learn so many things i applied whatever i studied in in, in my office so in the time itself i become brilliant it's not like separately i studied for class or anything whatever i studied i apdi exam kaga padi thevilla automatically you will pass this is how previously we are but today because of coaching institutions and all it becomes totally different ஓகே கிளாஸுக்கு ஸ்ட இது
ask an engineer, even he can be electrical, electronic engineer, he cannot even fix the fan, he cannot even fix the tube light. He is electrical, electronic engineer, he can draw circuit and all. How the current works, he know. But he cannot fix the fan itself. Amma and the electrician go. Apni enna da pachya. See, we while doing article chip itself, ITR file pondro. Adle kaas samadhi kono. Karita. Like no, we are the core people. We are doing the core job for what we learned. We are doing justice. So you have to enjoy the article chip. At the same time, you have to study. So studies and article chip is not two different. Everything is one and the same. It's the mix. It. At the separate apaga outside well. You should encourage your juniors to go for class in the very early morning and don't accumulate your studies till the last minute. Today, all the crash courses are getting hit. At the last exam, actually, crash course is going to be Morning to evening for morning to evening. Update two months class, update exam. Maybe out of 100, two people or three people get the work out. But I decided last three months, I should not go for classes. I have to do number of sums by myself. Six to seven books I should finish. Maybe in institute one day revision class or two day revision class, but that is for only one subject or two subjects, not for all the eight subjects. Eight subjects into two days, but that is for 16 days or half month. So sit in home properly study for the last three months. I can't waste it. Anyone who is preparing for May 20, February, March, April, three months dedicated 10 hour studies. Dedicated 10 hour studies per day. 10 hours is the minimum amount. So, see, even I'm telling you, okay, October, we have another one month time. You can complete it. Dedicated 12 hours to 13 hours study per day. And you have to write mandatory test. Mandatory. Institute will be right, giving some mock test and all. Take the paper from the institute website. Okay, you cannot do it because today also mock test is going on. You cannot write that. They will be launching in the institute website. Take that. Write it in your home. Mock test answer. I have seen people who are studying RTP. RTP is for you to practice it. You have to write, 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 without seeing the answer you should write, then you should compare the answers, within the three hours you should do it. Okay, the time slot is also very important, morning to evening, but you should write, tuck, 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 you should throw it off. I will tell you, you do this, you will pass. Positive think, I can pass, I can pass, but don't think, you have to work for it, plan and work for it. Okay, coming back, section 219. Investigating the related parties. Can we investigate the related parties? Yes. yes, we can investigate the related parties also. How can we investigate the related parties? We have to we have to tell that we have a suspicion on this related parties and okay, holding company, subsidiary companies and all, we can do inspection. Then section 220, such and seizure again, same thing like 209. Sir, if I search and seize, how many days I can keep the books? 180 days. So, books are seized, I can keep it for 180 days. I have to again give the books, then I can do again one more search and I can keep See, if you are investigating government company, you have to intimate the uh, government ministry. Can you able to understand? Government ministry, ki you should do intimation. So, this is section. Uh, 220, 221 la Now, uh, seizing, you, you, you can freeze the, uh, what we can do, the uh, assets of the company, we can freeze the securities, those things and all, we can freeze. Then, uh, there should be a report. Okay, 223 la, there will be a report. That is amendment, 223 la, amendment. That amendment says that uh, that report can be obtained by any person, okay, who are uh, having interest in this company. That means even creditors can get that report, shareholders can get that report who are having interest in the company. Then 224, central government take, take the action. 225 is reimbursement of expenses. And 226 is uh, a voluntary winding up will even act without having prejudice to the investigation. That means investigation will happen parallelly, winding up will happen parallelly. Okay. Because winding up is a process, it will take some time. Then what? Uh, uh, legal advices and bankers should not be investigated. Okay. Uh, investigation is also applicable for foreign companies. In foreign companies, if you read section 384 in section section, that is a parallel section for this section. If you read section 384, it will say investigation is also applicable for foreign companies. So yeah. Then uh, this is section two. Then we'll go to the next chapter: compromise and arrangement. Amalgamation, mergers, those things. 230 talks about compromise and arrangement. 
there is two types of compromise one is you are compromising with your creditors another one is compromising with your shareholders then one company is buying this company or you your company is transferring the undertaking there are so many types like this if you are arranging with the creditors or bankers then you should see whether any cdr is mentioned like cdr means corporate debt restructuring is mentioned if you are doing corporate debt restructuring with the bankers then the bankers should form a scheme and it should be approved by rbi also okay big big companies and all they are doing corporate restructuring no rbi approval is necessary so first generally for least uh, compromise you have to write a scheme general uh, directors will write a scheme then they will go to nclt nclt after seeing the scheme they will ask you to conduct a meeting but before that meeting itself there is something called objection raising if the shareholder is having 10 percentage or the creditor having 5 percentage can object that the scheme is not proper and we need some modification in the scheme after that only they will be conducting a meeting in that meeting majority in numbers having 75 percentage in value has to approve it a majority in numbers having 75 percentage of value in approve it in case if 90 percentage of the people already signed that in affidavit that we are okay with it now meeting itself will be not called dispense of the meeting itself up in the section and there are so many types of compromise converting preference shares into equity converting loan into shares uh, converting uh, equity shares into differential voting rights so there are different types of compromise in case if the tribunal wants they can modify the scheme that is the next section okay they can modify the scheme here it's a small and they will try give some time to implement the scheme but if the scheme is not properly implemented the tribunal can even order for winding up this is the next section then in case if the company wants to transfer the undertaking same this kind of approval has to be obtained you have to submit to uh, tribunal then tribunal will be asking you to conduct a meeting more than 50 percent numbers either or small point is there there is one case which says employees are not furnished and fixtures okay dow caster amalgamated color is limited no case is there where they told employees are not furnished and fixtures before transferring the employees you should ask their permission if the employees are not giving the permission you cannot transfer them without the permission you have to give retrenchment compensation only here there is one uh, two sections which may be confusing uh, minority shareholding taking over and dissenting shareholders there are two sections with 35 36 irukum little confusion ah irukum okay see whenever we are purchase, we are majority shareholder we are purchasing from the minority shareholder without telling that we are going to compromise in future and we are paying very less amount and purchasing from them later we are selling to the transferee company at very higher amount now who is getting affected minority shareholders getting affected no if they go to tribunal tribunal may say that whatever extra amount you obtained no that you should share with these people also i mean they say minority shareholder they can also do the same thing okay in case of dissenting shareholders for example some shareholders are not selling their shares only we are not okay with it that means uh, still we want to continue as a shareholder with you in a minority basis see there are two options one is in the meeting la you have voted against but still majority that is uh, in numbers and 70 percent value approved it that means it is abiding on everyone right but it is not necessary if the person has gone for appeal sir we don't want to sell our shares sir we want to continue as our sir okay then you can continue if you are not going for appeal then if you are not going for appeal the highlight then the company can take over your share and deposit some money in the account which can be in the company till you come and claim if you gone for appeal you can continue with the company if you have not gone for your company your share will be automatically taken over because this scheme is binding on all the person this scheme is not binding for whom in a person who gone for appeal on the section that is very important and the descending shareholders la appealing the main appeal point na you can continue in this company appeal pola na your share will be automatically sold and the money will be deposited anga highlight enna na whatever money the company is giving to the person who have not gone for i mean who, who was okay with that same money will be given to you you will not reduce any money for saying uh, if you have approved this uh, scheme in the meeting you will get 80 rupees since you didn't approve no but without your approval also we passed because some person voted in favor now i will give only 50 abhi solla mudiyadu same money what you are giving to them the same money they are eligible 
இதுதான் அங்கே ஹைலைட் ஓகே தென் இன் கேஸ் ஆஃப் கவர்மெண்ட் கம்பெனி டூ தேர்ட்டி செவன் என்ன சொல்லுவோம்னா கவர்மெண்ட் கம்பெனி இஃப் தே வாண்ட் அமால் கமேட் தே கேன் கோ ஃபார் அமால் கமிஷன் ப்ரொவைடட் யூ ஹாவ் டு கிவ் சம் டைம் லிமிட் ஃபார் த பீப்புள் டு கம் ஃபார் அப்பீல் எக்ஸட்ரா இன் கேஸ் அ பீப்புள் ஆர் நாட் அப்பீலிங் தென் த ஸ்கீம் இஸ் பாஸ்ட் இன் கேஸ் அ பீப்புள் ஆர் அப்பீலிங் யூ ஹவ் டு சேஞ்ச் த ஸ்கீம் அண்ட் யூ ஹவ் டு தென் செக்ஷன் டூ தேர்ட்டி எயிட் நைன் ஓகே சி இன் கேஸ் இஃப் த கம்பெனி கான் ஃபார் அமால் கமிஷன் You have to maintain the books of accounts till the central government asks you to dispose of or you are asking the central government to dispose of. Okay, so that is nothing called 8 years and all. You have to keep the books of accounts till you uh, get the central government's permission. Directors of the amalgamated company. Okay, uh, they cannot escape that amalgamating company is no more, no. They cannot escape. So, the amalgamating company is like if there is any liability, the directors of that company is still liable even though the company is not in existence. ஓகே தீஸ் அண்ட் ஆல் இம்பார்ட்டன் செக்ஷன் தென் நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் அப்ர அப்ரஷன் மிஸ் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் அப்ரஷன் மீன்ஸ் ப்ரெஜிடிஷியல் டு த இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் கம்பெனி ஆர் பப்ளிக் மிஸ் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் மீன்ஸ் சேஞ்ச் இன் ஓனர்ஷிப் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் எக்ஸெட்ரா விச் வில் பி ப்ரெஜிடிஷியல் டு த இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த கம்பெனி கம்ப்ளைண்டிங் அகெயின்ஸ்ட் அப்ரஷன் இஸ் இன் செக்ஷன் டூ ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபோர் பட் ரெஸ்கியூ ஃபார் தட் தட் இஸ் பவர் ஆஃப் ட்ரிபிள் இஸ் கிவன் செக்ஷன் டூ ஃபார்ட்டி டூ ஸோ வாட் ட்ரிபிள் கேன் டூ ட்ரிபிள் கேன் grant some approvals okay like uh, tribunal can remove a director tribunal can appoint another director tribunal can stop a resolution from happening okay Tri- tribunal can monitor it uh, tribunal can say the moa amendment is wrong aoa amendment is wrong those things and all tribunal can do if any person removed by the tribunal next 5 years he cannot be director in any company okay he cannot even came composition if any agreement which is prejudicial to the interest of the company transfer of undertaking or any other agreement which is prejudicial interest of the company if the tribunal comes and uh, cut the undertake and the agreement that person may be claiming the compensation from the company no because it is a breach of an agreement if tribunal comes and cut the agreement they cannot do any compensation for that breach of agreement they cannot claim any compensation because section 243 la what is the consequences no section irukku that section is clearly says any agreement which is breached by the tribunal interference you can not give any compensation so very super section and section so if you want if you think that agreement something is bad of your company ask someone to com- uh, complain to tribunal and tribunal should interfere tribunal should cancel the agreement then you will not pay any compensation okay then class action suit class action suits is a dangerous provision for auditor actually because previously in satyam scam in shareholders of us got their compensation from pwc okay for some other company whatever it may be but shareholders of india didn't get any compensation because there is no class action suits class action suits means the person can complain against the expert or auditors you see nowadays we are complaining only on directors no once you use class action suits you can even complain on the auditors and shar- uh, auditors and experts and they have to pay compensation for your loss that is a class action suits very good uh, section against you people uh, against us only correct correct okay next see class action suits la 1 uh, 244 you should read as well as 245 also and the how many people can complain abdin irukku One tenth or hundred, whichever is less in numbers. One tenth voting power in case a company is having share capital. Okay. See, po, voting power, ka. Ipo in, the, in the point of that, you should see carefully. Issued capital, you should see. One tenth of the issued capital. You should not put voting power. Okay, you want to know the issued capital. You want to park the car. There is no place, lot of agents are there. Okay, which section we are in? 245 okay then 246 and that uh enna sir enna solla irundha adu class action suit class action suit solla irundha okay so class action suit you can claim from the shareholders i mean auditors also 246 is winding up ah application of certain provision winding up winding up also see this sections is applicable even at the time of winding up that's all that is 246 okay then 247 is uh, registered uh, registered valuers okay see registered valuers means a person who got the qualification of registered valuations okay and uh, you should have completed this course in ibba this registered valuers is mandatory from february uh, to then uh, then is 1 to 19 from february 19 onwards 
this uh, register elevation is mandatory. Okay, uh, section 247, it says like uh, registered valuer is compulsory for doing all type of registered valuation, like share, share valuation, building valuation, anything. For example, exchange of assets, we studied in section 192. There also registered valuation is compulsory. Okay, then uh, any share valuation, taking over, etc., intrinsic valuation, for that also registered valuation is compulsory. Uh, it should be uh, qualified as a charter accountant or a company secretary and it should have passed the examination of IVBA also. And you should have deposited 10,000 rupees for registered valuation uh, membership. You shouldn't have done any uh, kind of uh, valuation which is like you no know, prejudicial to the interest of the company, means like uh, independence. In last three years, there is an amendment. In last three years, you shouldn't have done any management services. Okay, you should be a totally independent person. If I done some management services, then I cannot said to be independent person. So last three years, I should not have served this company. Then, 248. 248 is in a very important section, striking off. If the company has not filed annual accounts or annual returns for a period of two years, contingency for a period of two years, then ROC has a right to strike off my company. In case, if the company is dormant after a period of one year from the incorporation, that means they are not doing any business, then they have right to strike off the company. In case, if the company is a fictitious company, there is no physical structure itself. So after inspection, they can strike off your company. Before striking off the company, generally they will give 30 days notice. Okay. If you appeal against that or if you want some extra time, they will also give that time also. Then section 249 says, in case if you want to go for voluntary strike off, okay, it's not like no mandatory, means it's not ROC strike off, I want to myself, okay, defunct company, the company is a defunct company, I want to go for voluntary strike off, then you can go for voluntary strike off, provided you have not changed your office or you have not changed your name in last three months. This is important point. So, if how, how out of this company, which company cannot go for voluntary strike? They can give the name of the company changed, the place of the company changed, anything, or dues is pending, kind of. If the company is striked off, the company is still alive. If the company is striked off, the company is still alive for the purpose of sell of the selling of selling of assets and disposing of the liabilities. Because if the property is in the name of the company, I have to sell the assets. No, and there is a uh, proposed amendment. It is not yet come. It's a proposed. Uh, what happens to the assets of the company which is striked off? They may constitute board of administrator in future and they will take over the assets of the central government. But as of now, it is not implemented. Okay. Next. Uh, sir, can I get my company back? Yes, you can go for appeal. Uh, 252, you can go file appeal to NCLT and get your company back. Either you can go or even your creditor can go. You know, now income tax department is going and appealing. Because dues are there, company is strike off, directors are happy. So income tax department is filing and taking over the company. Okay, so creditors can also file, shareholders can file, directors also can file. But uh, tribunal, when they will give back your company, no. Only, only ITR has been filed. If previous year ITRs has not been filed, they are not giving us. Because I have gone for one company. From incorporation, we have not filed anything. Chale utto. Now the tribunal is not giving us the company back. Then, winding up we will see later. And then we will go for uh, foreign company, 379. See foreign company, company incorporated outside India and having place of business in India. They are operating electronically or physically, directly or through agent. They are called foreign companies. 279 foreign companies. Oh, sorry, 372, 379. You, 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 Left, right and center they deleted. 
company is capable of bringing registration under this act i think 366 they are asking okay part 9 conversion of 1926 act athu idang don't worry now sir we are foreign companies right <coughs> there are two types of foreign companies foreign company where only this chapter is applicable foreign company where this entire act is applicable if the foreign company is controlled in india the entire act is applicable that means 50% or more of the shareholders are indians then entire act is applicable if only less than 50% are indians then only this act is applicable only this chapter is applicable so this is 379 control means 50% of the shareholding held by indian citizen indian body corporate okay then section 380 380 talks when our the foreign company is having a place established in india how to establish a place in india they are starting a business in india then immediately within 30 days fc1 has to be filed fc1 talks about what fc1 says you have to attach these documents where you are operating in india branches who is your principal company give their moa aoa in the translated english if the translation is done then it should be signed by apostle or consulate general அதெல்லாம் ஒரு கொஷினாக கேட்டாங்க ஓகே ஹூ இஸ் ஆத்தரைஸ்ட் டு சைன் த ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் அப்போசில் ஆர் கான்சுலேட் ஜென்ரல் எம்பசி அந்த மாதிரி இருக்கும் ஓகே தென் அப்போசில் மீன்ஸ் லைக் அ நோட்ரி பேசிக்லி ஏபிபி ஓஎஸ்டிஎல்இ தென் யூ ஹவ் டு கிவ் தட் ஆத்தரைஸ்ட் ரெப்ரஸன்டேட்டிவ் டீடைல்ஸ் டேரக்டர்ஸ் டீடைல்ஸ் ப்ரீவியஸ் ஆப்ரேஷன்ஸ் இன் இந்தியா டீடைல்ஸ் எக்ஸெட்ரா once you file fc1 if there is any changes within 30 days you should file fc2 then section 381 talks about books of accounts maintenance in case the foreign company is having operations in india you will have uh, income expenditure asset liabilities you have to maintain the books of accounts in accrual basis like under section 128 then you should prepare the financial statements okay that financial statement should contain two specific disclosure one is repatriation disclosure another one is later party transfer disclosure repatriation means how much amount you are com- taking out from india and the disclosure you should have then later party transaction disclosures then section 382 board should be there okay every uh, foreign companies in front of that there should be a board which is in english language and letters and all should also be in english language because most of the japanese companies will have only in japanese language who can understand that so they should be mandatory in english language then 383 if the roc or any other authority like vat uh, gst authority have to serve any notice there won't be any register office properly so serving notice on the authorized representative is enough as if it served notice on the company then 384 four things applicability annual return same like indian companies act is applicable to those people also charges same like indian companies is applicable to those people also investigation same like indian companies it is applicable to those people also then uh, you know uh, debentures okay debentures and the security those things are applicable to them then fees and all will be charged for like n- normally roc fees will be charged now for them also fees will be charged then interpretation if a company is holding uh, or company is having only share transfer office they are not doing any business they are having only share transfer office whether it should be considered as a place of business in india yes so if for example if there is one company called kekran mekran Kekran Mekran is not having any business in India other than having only share registration office, share transfer office. Some shareholders are in India, so there is one share registration office. Whether share registration office, just because of that, whether this company is called as foreign company, there is no any other business. Yes, this company is a foreign company because section 386 says <coughs> share registration office is also considered as place of business in India. Understood? Then, section 390. Next, dating of prospectus. You should mention when you come to India. how many years you are in operations in india then what is the main object with which you are going then only you can issue prospectus so prospectus should have these things 388 consent of expert before giving prospectus to any person expert has to sign it expert has to read it and sign it this is consent to be obtained then 389 uh, registering the prospectus to roc at least 3 days before you should register the prospectus to roc before issuing the public 390 idr indian depository receipt whenever a company is issuing idr idr is there in your syllabus or not i don't know okay uh, whenever the company is asking some money from indians it should be deposit uh, denominated only in inr okay so a foreign company coming and begging to you you can give only in indian rupees right so the inr only it should be second 
in that home country they should have at least 15 million usd as paid up capital and 100 million usd as market capitalization that means each share at least traded for two two dollars okay and the minimum amount asked in india okay picture grangla minimum it should be 50 crores okay idea should be at least how much 50 crores okay and the person who is depositing no uh, 10000 rupees per thing he has to give it means like denomination be 10000 rupees okay uh, india la idr issue pannadhu ore or company da ipodiki uh, i think it is standard chartered okay mm. then uh, 391 punishment see if you violated this please please sign if you violate the sections there will be punishments 391 2 and 3 it talking about if you are giving a misleading prospectus one type of fine um, 34 and 35 or section imprisonment is also there in that section okay civil and criminal liability that section is applicable for prospect of violation if there is any um, uh, individual or a company violated some section foreign company section other than prospectus uh, up to 3 lakh rupees fine okay and 50,000 rupees per day for continuous offense and any uh, agreement entered between Indian company and the foreign company Indian co the agreement is valid as against the Indian company they can file case against the foreign company agreement is valid because since because I violated some section foreign company cannot escape so as against Indian company Indian company can still say they are responsible for that breach of contract ne? Indian company has a right to file a case against them so this is section foreign companies this is 393 then 394 and 395 government company chapters whenever a government company uh, after finalizing their audit after finalizing with uh, AGM and all they have to file annual report through central government in case central government is holding shares then Lok Sabha, Lai Sabha they have to p give this uh, annual report within three months of AGM so AGM imagine is happening in the month of say September before December they should give it in the parliament in case if it is state owned company then give it in the state legislative assembly in case both then it should be given to both understood this is section 394 and 395 three months from the end of uh, AGM okay then from 396 to uh, 404 they removed those things are uh, ROC chapters they removed uh, I think 406 is there Nidhi company okay to promote savings attitude this Nidhi company is established Please, please be silent, be silent. Just listen, just listen, don't discuss. Shh. Nidhi company. Nidhi company should not involve themselves in NBFC type of transaction. So no NBFC, no higher purchase. Nidhi company shall uh, have net owned funds is to deposit one issue 20. So net owned funds is to deposit is how much? One issue 20. Then uh, Nidhi company cannot give dividend more than 25 percentage. How much percentage? 25 percentage. Nidhi company um, shall have locker rental income, but that should not cross 25 percent of the total income. So what should be the major income? 75 percentage interest income. They can have locker income also, but it's not cross more than 25 percentage. 20 percent, 20 percent, 20, 20 percentage. If they want to give more than 25 percentage dividend, they have to get dash permission. RD permission, regional director permission should be obtained. So these are some common points to be remembered in this section. <coughs> Nidhi company director will be director for a period of 10 years. Okay, Nidhi company director will be director for 10 years tenure. Okay. In case of dividends which is issued in Nidhi company, generally dividends should be paid in cash, no. Nidhi company, it will be credited to the ledger account because shareholders will have some current account with the Nidhi company. So it can be credited into the ledger account of the shareholders. Like, no, imagine in banks you are having shares and also having current account or say savings bank account. Whenever the bank is declaring dividend, it will be crediting in your account itself. And the Mari Nidhi company, just imagine like that. It's a bank form of company. You know, every shareholder can only be the deposit holders. Deposit holders cannot be outsiders. So mandatorily shareholders. And only individual can hold shares, no body corporate. Minimum 200 individuals should be necessary for forming a Nidhi company. So to minimum amount 200 individuals. So Nidhi company should be dash company only, public company only. Because minimum is 200 members to form the company. 
टू हंड्रेड मेबर्स शुड आलो बी इंडिविजुअल्स ओनली सो नो बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट इज अलाउड ओके आल दिस थिंग्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नेक्स्ट देन वील गो फॉर एन सी एल टी एन सी एल टी दे रिमूव आल दिस प्रिमरी सेक्शन ओके ओनली द मेन अपीलिंग सेक्शन दे आर हेविंग ओनली फ्रम दट दे विल आस्क क्वेश्चन सी एन सी एल टी टू एन सी एल ए टी अपील विच शुड बी विदिन फार्टी फाइव डेज बट इफ यू आर नॉट अपीलिंग विदिन फार्टी फाइव डेज दे कैन गिव अडिशनल फार्टी फाइव डेज टाइम फॉर यू एन सी एल ए टी टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट सिक्सटी डेज एंड अडिशनल सिक्सटी डेज टाइम इज गिवन फॉर यू ओके दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स एंड हॉल दि एन सी एल टी मेबर एन सी एल ए टी मेबर्स आर पब्लिक सर्वेंट्स यू कैनाट फाइल केस ऑन द स्पेसिफिक पर्सन बिकॉज द आर्डर इज इनवैलिड यू कैन गो ओनली फॉर अपील ओके इतम और सेक्शन देन टिल एन सी एल टी कम्स इट विल बी हेडलड बै सी एल बी अंड हईकोर्ट बट एन सी एल टी आलरे केम ट्रांसलेशन प्रोफेशन अंड आल इट वो वर्क टूडे बिकॉज सी द चाम इज आक्चुअल अंडरस्टांडिंग हू इज द मेबर आफ एन सी एल टी बट दो इनिशियल सेक्शन दे हव बी टेकन अवट ऐ डोट नो वै दे हव टेकन अवट हू इज क्वालिफाइड मेबर आफ देव टेकन अवट आलमोस्ट एवरी थिंग दे मेड वेरी ईजी कंपनी आक्ट इज नौ देसीएल वे सेक्शन अल तूक सर हाँ फोर ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी इन सेक्शन हाँ सी नेक्स्ट बो हाँ अपील फर्स्ट अपील अदीड डिस्पोसल विदि वाट टाइम एनसीएल शुड कंप्लीट द अपील नई डेस् एन सी एल टी जनरली हेफ कंप्लीट वेन एवर यू फाइल्ड एन अपील जनरली इट शुड बी कंप्लीट विदिन नई डेस् इफ इट इज नॉट बीन कंप्लीटेड इट शुड बी फाइल टू मीन लाइक एन सी एल ए टी दे शुड आस् द पर्मिशन टू कंप्लीट इन अनदर नई डेस् सो नई प्लस अनदर नई ओके देन सुप्रीम कोर्ट मुझे अपरा हाँ सी जनरली दे विल फॉलो द सिविल प्रोसीजर्स लाइक सम्मनिंग एनफोर्सिंग अटेंडेंस एक्सामेशन आन ओथ टेकिंग एफिडेट दो थिंग्स नेक्स्ट contempt of court contempt of court you know right you, you should not waste that court time and uh, without proof you should not just like uh, drag the case then then public servants i told that then protection of action action done in good faith only you cannot personally file any case you can go just appeal on the orders of that so say for example i have given an order which is against you you cannot file case on me Okay, because I have done according to the information expression given to me and evidences. So, if you want, you can file appeal against. Next. Power to seek assistance of chief minister of metropolitan. Ah, see, generally to, I uh, am not sure. See, is and all, you have to take the chief metropolitan magistrate's approval. Supreme Court not in jurisdiction. No, High Court will enter here. Okay, appeal panna na you have to go directly Supreme Court, and no one can give any stay on whenever the case is pending against in NCLT. Vacancy in tribunal and appellate tribunal not in NCLT. Okay, vacancy in tribunal will not. For example, two member tribunal, one member is absent or one member is resigned, etc. One person is there sitting and he is giving judgment. Whether you are saying this order is invalid, nothing like that. Vacancy or any disqualification in one person and all will not make the act of the tribunal invalid. If you want, you can go for appeal, but the order is order only. Okay, legal representation. Okay, for example, if the case is against me, I can go and get a legal assistance like le- uh, advocates are there, charter accountants are there, so we can get a legal representation that is allowed in tribunal. Limitations of limitation act apply. Hmm, law of limitation apply. Time limit or not, law of limitations applicable. Transfer of second pending proceeding. Ah, uh, I court uh, CLB and all whatever pending proceeding is now is dealt with NCLT. Next is uh, special court. See, in two thirty five, special court now says who is going to be leading the special court? Judge. His qualification is called session judge. Okay, and he will be generally dealing the cases which is more than two years imprisonment. But other cases and all will be dealt by uh, judicial magistrate, first class. and uh, chief metropolitan magistrate only they will be handling the case all civil procedures will be conducted uh, for the government who will be arguing means public prosecutor will be arguing public prosecutor means a person who is having 7 years experience as advocate then uh, offences under this is uh, 
bailable offence. That means non-cognizable, which is bailable. When an offence will be taken into account means if it is complained by member, ROC, central government or SEBI. But when ROC, central government, SEBI and all when they complain, they will not come. Only representative will come. But shareholder or member if they complain, then shareholder has to come. So uh, who is taking note of offence? Court will take note of who is, who is the court? Special court. So they will ask this question. Write about cognizable offence or cognizance of offence. Cognizance means taking note. Cognizable means non bailable You should understand this difference of this two. Then uh, compounding has been withdrawn from your chapters. Okay, previously we have compounding. You can either go to RD for compounding or NCLT for compounding. Allah now it has been withdrawn. Then uh, mediation and conciliation committee is there. Okay, who is a mediation conciliation committee? Uh, arbitration committee. Okay, which is set up for media and uh, to do. Uh, panchayat between the two disputing party generally within 90 days la you should get it settled but if it's not getting settled you will get time extension also then what is the next section public i told appeal to uh, see if you want to go against appeal against special court you can go to high court nclt is supreme court special court is high court then uh, see, without any evidence, if you file any case against a person, that person can ask you compensation. Compensation called acquisition without any reasons. Means like without any proof, you are filing a case. Next. Application of fines. If the court collects so much of fines, what they are going to use this with fines? They are going to give rewards for the person who give the tips. And to run a prosecution, there is some expenses. No. So, these two expenses they can meet. Come on, tell me what expenses can be met? Cost of, Cost of the proceedings, of the proceedings and the giving award to the person who gave. Factors for determining level of punishment. Ah, see, the two new section has been introduced. If it is a dormant company or small company and all, whatever fines which is given in the section, only half of it is applicable for you. And generally, before giving any punishment, some factors to be considered. What is the level of uh, mistake you have done? Okay, whether you are doing it repeatedly or it's the first time. And what is the loss cost to a person on whom you have, who is a victim? So, whether you are doing it first time or repeatedly, loss cost, how much gain you get because of this kind of. Either law tribunal will keep in mind, then only they will give a judgment. Okay, disproportionate gain, unfair advantage, repetitive default and loss cost to the person. These things will be kept in mind. Next, the 446B, A, B, A, B, introduce the company. That is the half of the fine. One person company, the Dharman company, they will give only half of the fine. Small company. Fraud. So, fraud, there are two things. One is more than 10 lakhs affecting public, then not affecting public. See, if it is affecting public, minimum 3 years imprisonment. If it is not affecting public, 6 months to 10 year imprisonment. If it is affecting public, maximum imprisonment is not given. That means they can put some other anything port law. But if it is not affecting public, what is the maximum imprisonment? 10 years. Minimum is 6 months. Okay. 6 months or 3 months? 6 months to 10 years. Okay. Penalty is what is the fraud amount and the amount of penalty. Okay. And 448 is same like 447. If you give false statement, you will be punished. Then what is the next? Evidence. Okay. Ah, sir, please understand, there are so many sections removed. You cannot go by... Per four, per, per, see, the, the problem is, I know the act in chronological order. I am getting struck because there are so many sections removed. Okay, for example, 447 is fraud, 448 is false statement, 449 is evidence, 450 is uh, for the punishment for no other penalty when, then repeated offense, then wrongful withholding of property. Abre in a chronological order, no. But I am getting struck because one section is one section is one section they have removed the sections. That is the reason I am taking assistance. And you should know which section is not there. You have read the last letter. What is it? That's not Last attempt, in July 2019, they removed so many things. Remove it, you don't Remove it, you don't That's the problem. You don't have to go to the book. You don't have to go to the book. That is the reason people are thinking life is so easy. I don't know if you remove it. In class, you can super learning. 
so many sections now removed okay please learn it subject oh namma exam ku hack la irukku sir okay namma exam ku see somebody has complained law is so big so they made it as a child's play நமக்கு ஆக்கில் தான் இருக்குது ஸோ நான் தான் சார் நான் ஆக்ட் படிக்கிறேன்ல நான் எக்ஸாமுக்கு எனக்கு என்ன சம்மந்தம் ஐ எம் ஸ்டடிங் ஓன்லி ஃபார் ஆக்ட் நோ ஃபார் ஃபார் மீ இட்ஸ் ஷுட் பி தேர் இஃப் ஐ ஃபர்கெட் இட் தென் மை மேனேஜர் வில் கிட் மீ அதுக்கு ஆ அடுத்த செக்ஷன் ஆ பனிஷ்மெண்ட் வென் தெர் இஸ் நோ ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் பெனால்டி கிவன் இன் செக்ஷன் டென் தௌசண்ட் ருபீஸ் பெனால்டி ஸோ இஃப் தெர் இஸ் நோ பனிஷ்மெண்ட் இன் எனி செக்ஷன் பட் யூஆர் வயலேட்டிங் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் சார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் சொல்கிறேன் பார் இஃப் யூ ஆர் நாட் அட்டெண்டிங் ஜென்ரல் மீட்டிங் எஸ் ஆடிட்டர் ஆடிட்டர் ஷூட் அட்டன் ஜென்ரல் மீட்டிங் இஃப் யூர் நாட் அட்டிங் ஊ விச் ஆடிட்டர் அட்டெண்டிங் டே பிஃபோர் எஸ்ட் டே வேர் ஆர் யூ இஃப் யூ ஆர் ஆடிட்டர் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஐ எம் ஆர்டிக் வச்சு ஐ எம் ஆடிட்டர் ஐ ஐ எம் ஆடிட்டிங் ஒன் ஒன் ஆர் டூ கம்பெனி செஞ்சுக்கோ டே பிஃபோர் எஸ்ட் டே டே பிஃபோர் எஸ்ட் டே என்று தேர்ட்டி தேர்ட்டி எயிட் செப்டம்பர் அந்த டேட்டெலாம் எல்லா கம்பெனி ஏஜிஎம் நடக்கும் வேர் ஐ வாஸ் இன் மை ஆஃபீஸ் பட் ஐ ஷுட் அட்டன் த ஏஜிஎம் நோ ஆஸ் பர் செக்ஷன் ஒன் பாயிண்ட் சிக்ஸ் இஃப் ஐ எம் நாட் அட்டிங் வாட் ஐ வுட் டூ கெட் இட் எக்ஸம்டெட் பை பாசிங் ஆர்டினல் ரெசல்யூஷன் இந்த ஏஜிஎம் அப்போ மினிட்ஸ் புக்கில் தே ஷுட் மென்ஷன் ஆர்டினரி ரெசல்யூஷன் அஸ்வின் பாஸ் எக்ஸாம்டட் ஃபார் த ஆடிட்டர்னு வெதர் தே பாஸ் டா வித தே ரோட் இன் மினிட்ஸ் புக்காக ஐ டோன் நோ இஃப் ஐ எம் நாட் அட்டனிங் த ஏஜிஎம் வாட் இஸ் த பெனால்ட்டி ஃபார் மீ இஃப் யூ ரீட் செக்ஷன் ஒன் ஃபார்ட்டி செவன் விச் இஸ் த பெனால்ட்டி ஆஃப் தட் ஒன் ஃபார்ட்டி செவனில் ஒன் ஃபார்ட்டி சிக்ஸுக்கு மட்டும் தெரிஸ் நோஸ் பெனால்ட்டி மிஸ்டேக் இந்தி காயினிங் ஆஃப் தட் டெலிபரேட் மிஸ்டேக்கு ஓகே ஆடிட்டர் சார் சாலி எஸ் நோ பெனால்ட்டி அட்டிங் ஃபோர் ஃபிஃப்டிவா பெனால்ட்டி இஸ் டென் தௌசண்ட் ருபீஸ் ஃபார் ஒன் கம்பெனி Okay, so how many companies? If you have 10 companies, 1 lakh rupees penalty. That's the value of it. Next. Educational penalty. Educational penalty. Four penalty. Yeah, see, ROC is now setting up a separate team for adjudication. Previously, ROC is only doing all adjudication. ROC is now not having so many hands. So a separate team is going to be established. They are going to put penalties. They are going to do inquiries, etc. 458 if you do repeat a default twice the fine okay so if you are doing within 3 years repeat a default means within 3 years so i have done an offence i went for nclt got it exempted again i am doing the offence then two times fine then 455 dormant company what is dormant company a dormant company means which is not doing any significant activities four activities is not called as significant activities come and tell me one maintenance of office record expenses 2 roc fees 3 government taxes 4 allotting shares for getting money for these three okay these four are not called as significant activities uh, so you can do this four activities and still you can call yourself as dormant company if you are dormant for a period of 5 years then your company will be strike off because under section 249 and 8 if the company is not filing annual accounts and returns 2 years in winding up la roc mention in case 5 years if you are not filing annual accounts and returns your company will be owned up because after strike off they will give you 3 years for getting your company back 252 la there is a 3 years period so if you are not filing annual accounts and returns for a period of 2 years you will be striked off under 248 but under section 252 you have 3 years time to recover your company if you are not going for recovery within 3 years the totally how many years 5 years then your company will be owned up that's all over that is a linking then then okay 394 395 ஏடா பாவி நீ தூங்கிட்ட சொல்லு ஆனுவல் ரிப்போர்ட்ட பார்லிமென்ட்ல ஃபைன் பண்ண சொன்னேன் இதான் இதான் ப்ராப்ளம் சி வைண்டிங் அப் வைண்டிங் அப்ல வெரி ஃபியூ செக்ஷன் only you should read what are the types of winding up you have voluntary winding up creditor winding up court winding up or nclt winding up voluntary winding up creditor winding up has been taken to ibc so you have to read only NCLT winding up, okay. If ROC complained for winding up, on what grounds they can complain? If central government complained, on what grounds they can complain? Sovereignty, integrity affected, okay. Central government can complain. Five years, annual accounts, annual returns, you are not filed. ROC can complain. Okay, those things. Then, who will be appointed immediately? Provisional liquidator will be appointed. Provisional liquidator can, once, up, once approved by the company, he becomes company liquidator. so it's like a uh, interim resolution professional become resolution professional so provisional liquidator is a person who is appointed by the tribunal then later once the company approves it become company liquidator avladha official liquidator is totally different person official liquidator means a person who is appointed as by the central government to govern the company that person is called official liquidator okay that is given in section 359 which has been taken out from your syllabus then on the process of winding up the liquidator has a right to sell the assets and dispose of the liabilities and you can also call for the call money dues etc 
if the tribunal thinks fit they can ask the company shareholders who are having participated of shares to pay the call money if there is an extra surplus in the, they can distribute as a dividend the company has to maintain the books of accounts okay the books of accounts has to be regularly audited by the auditor and it should be uh, adopted in the agm and it should be given to the creditors as well as shareholders okay preliminary report 281 like the content of uh, what is assets liabilities of the company then uh, call money how much due how much can be realized whether any promoters is doing any violation whether we have to do inspection on the promoter investigation on the promoter those things if investigation is ordered then promoter will be inspected those things are there then very important is 326 and 327 326 is overriding preference regulator 327 is preference regulator 326 la what you should study is two people secured creditors workman dues okay they will be standard in a equal position the paripasu class in one secured creditors and workman dues will be treated as equal these people will be settled first if the assets are not enough to settle these people nothing more than this will be given to any other person so try to settle only these two people if the assets are not enough if the assets are enough to settle these people then go to 327 okay so secure creditors and workman dues has to be paid first if anything extra then you should go to the second one second one says government dues employee salary then uh, uh, pf dues leave and cashment then unsecured portion of the secured greater okay unsecured portion of the secured greaters okay those things will be ranked in equal proportion last comes the investigation expenses okay so these are all have to be settled later that is after 326 settlement then you have this uh, fraudulent case that is uh, any person who should stand in the queue at the last if he's trying to come and front then that's called fraudulent preference before one year of winding up some creditors take some assets of the company some creditors got some settlement from the company those things are called fraudulent settlement okay those things are void nclt can tell whatever amount settled last one year okay these things are void so that person will be standing in the queue only and whatever settlement has been taken back by the company and it will be coming into the pool of the board settle okay six months or one year or six months ago transfer of asset or settlement of liability there are two things six months transfer, transfer one, year. one year okay transfer of asset last one year settlement of any creditor is last six months okay So only this section you please read. Basically, 326 to 333 to study. Then something called onerous property. If any company having some asset which is not uh, asset now, for example, I am having some shares in your company and that shares is a partly paid up shares. Your company is also in winding up. For you, I am a list A contributory. For me, you are an asset my liquidator is trying to sell the asset but your liquidator is what he is doing he is asking call money from me so what I, my liquidator should go you should go to the court and tell what disclaim this as a onerous property i don't want this property only because this property is creating liability can you able to understand uh, so for that you have to raise any objection within 28 days once this case is filed you have to come with objection your liquidator has to file objection if the liquidator fails to object it then this property is over means like it's called onerous property i need not pay any amount from this property okay so uh, these are some important sections for winding up we don't have less time only we have we have another few minutes only uh, we have to complete the session uh, i will go to now ibc i will tell only important things what is change in ibc see uh, previously we have 75 percentage approval correct okay now it has become 66 percentage approval previously previously certificate from the bank is needed okay now certificate of bank is optional okay there is something called certificate from the bank right okay uh, just to prove that the creditor has not received the money from the debtor then uh, previously you cannot assign your dues. Financial creditor cannot assign the dues. Now you can assign the dues. Financial creditor can assign the dues. You know something? There is one case law called Synergy Dure. In the case law, the financial creditor is a related party for the debtor. Since because I cannot participate in the COC, they assign to some other person 
and the some other person is participated in COC and 90% of the COC is controlled by these people, they gave approval. So this case is there. And 90% of the COC, if they approve, they can withdraw the petition. Previously, it was not there. Now it is there. Okay, 90% of the COC, if they approve, petition itself can be withdrawn. Okay. A creditor, COC, who, which creditor will be there? Only financial creditor will be there. If the financial creditor is assigning the dues, then it should be intimated to the debtor. Carpet debtor that I have assigned your dues and so it should be intimated. Now we will go to important amendments. Dividend, I told you that uh, in, interim dividend next year profit before the AGM we can take. Uh, unrealized gain, notional gain on revaluation and all is not profits. Current year profit, if it is included, generally they will not include that, it will be in reserves only. If they have included, you should have excluded that for calculating current year's profit. This is section 123. 129 la financial statements of the foreign subsidiaries also to be consolidated. You know that already. It is given in the rules previously, now it is being in the act itself. Then Uh, how many years you can you have to keep the books of accounts? Eight years. Eight years. And how many years NCLT can go back and ask you to revise? Is uh, eight years only. But if the investigation is pending, more years, more years, more years. Then uh, 134 la um, managing director shall be in Rugu. Two directors, one of them shall be managing director. That is been May. Then uh, chief executive officer only if he is a director in Rugu. It has been now. Chief Executive Officer, that's all. Then extract of annual return, you can give it in, uh, uh, that uh, uh, link you can give. www.rail.com, it has been hosted there. You say, enough. You need not give the entire things. Then, um, 135, that is CSR applicability. Previously it was any previous year. Now it is only? Immediately previous year. Two percentage, okay, if they are not spending, it can be transferred to account and it can be spent in next three years, okay. Then, you can send the finance statement in shorter notice, okay, provided 95% of the people approve it. Subsidiary order accounts if it is audited, you should host it in your website, okay. In case if you have foreign subsidiary, in case you are consolidating the foreign subsidiary, it is not necessary that foreign subsidiary should be audited. You can mention in your notes that one of the foreign subsidiary is unaudited, but we have to consolidate it. So you can do that also. Consolidation is mandatory, no? So with, even without auditing, you can do that. And in auditor, other matter paragraph is there, no? Other matter paragraph, auditor can write, one of the subsidiary is not audited, no? he can write. You can see the reliance balance sheet and all, because uh, so many subsidiaries will be there. Not every subsidiary can get it audited by April month. It is impossible because Reliance Industries is releasing in April month. And it has like 150 subsidiaries. Do you think all the 150 subsidiaries will be audited before April month? Chance sale. So, Adala, Kandipa, other matter, they would have mentioned that few subsidiaries have not been audited. But just to sonna both. It's just consolidation. No. Reliance Industries is audited. Only for the consolidation purpose, we are taking the subsidiaries things. Uh, if you are not filing generally a form, uh, previously 270 days time limit is given. Okay. Now that has been amended and section 403 says every day 100 rupees fine. So how much ever time you want you can take. Daily pay 100 rupees fine. Then auditor ratification has been omitted. In the 5 years every year ratification has been omitted. For rotation, for private limited companies, earlier it was 20 crores paid up capital, now it has been increased to 50 crores. Then previously, for 141, the auditors, uh, parent company, subsidiary company and all should not do services in Urgo. Auditor cannot even have the company. Then how is the parent, the subsidiary, joint venture and all? So those things have been removed and they told what? Any associate of the auditor should not do these services.
ऑडिटर्स आर नो हैविंग राइट टू एक्सेस सब्सिडरीज बुक्स सो फॉर एस इट रिलेट्स टू कंसोलिडेशन 143 फाइंस ऑफ द ऑडिटर्स एस नाउ मेंशन इन टाइम्स फोर टाइम्स से एट टाइम्स दैट हैज बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड रेजिडेंट डायरेक्टर्स सेक्शन 4149 ला दैट रेजिडेंट्स का स्टेटस यू शुड नॉट सी फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस ईयर यू शुड सी फ्रॉम द करंट ईयर स्टे pecuniary interest la 10% of the remuneration is not considered to be pecuniary interest so if i am getting any income in the previous year before getting appointed as an independent director 10% of the remuneration up to that it is exempted from the pecuniary remuneration pecuniary relationship din if you are violating the din provision fines is there no the fines and all has been now amended but you need not remember all those fines because there are so many fines in that sections okay Previously, if you are contravening some DIN provision, imprisonment was there. Imprisonment is now removed. There is no imprisonment for violating DIN. One lakh rupees deposit for uh, appointing a director one sixty la. Independent director who is nominated by the nomination committee one lakh rupees is withdrawn. It's not necessary. Alternate director, existing director cannot act as alternate director for any other director. So only one vote you can have in the board meeting. Cash vacancy director, it is applicable to even private limited company now. Previously it was only public limited company. Cash vacancy director has to be now ratified by the shareholders. Previously it is not necessary. Maximum number of directorship if you crossed previously you are not disqualified. Now you are disqualified under section one sixty four. New directors appointed. Within six months, you should file all the incomplete filings. Otherwise, he will also be disqualified. If you file appeal also, you still be called as disqualified only. But you will not be vacating the office. In counting twenty limits, Darman Company is excluded from the twenty. If a person has violated more directorships, means like one sixty five, not only disqualification but five thousand rupees per day fine. Video conferencing, even though uh, I mean video conferencing, you can do even though it is not to be done. But when physical quorum is there, you can do the transactions. What are those? Finance statement adoption, board's report, prospectus, those things. Once and once an audit committee approval for later party transaction, audit committee approval can be given even after some time. That means ratification. But if it is not ratified, it is voidable as option of the audit committee. Borrowing on the previously securities premium is not included in the limit. Only paid up capital and free reserves was there previously. Now securities premium is also included in that. So paid up capital plus free reserves plus securities premium for the borrowing class. That hundred percentage we are seeing no restrictions on one seventy nine one eighty. Previously the securities premium is not there. Now it's included. One eighty five la previously body corporate to body corporate when they are interested they cannot do that uh, loan transaction. Now, inter-corporate deposit is possible by passing special resolution. One eighty-eight. If it is uh, necessary to get ordinary resolution, if you are not taking it, then it is voidable as option of the shareholders. Previously, it is voidable as option of the board. Now, it is voidable as option of the board or shareholders, as the case may be. Okay, whichever authority has to give approval. Uh, more than 70 years of age appointed as MD. Previously special resolution. Now ordinary resolution plus central government approval is also possible for getting more remuneration. Previously central government approval is necessary even beyond the scheduled five limits. Okay. Uh, now everything is special resolution. Uh, previously, investigation report. Who can take take it? There is no specific provision. Now, whoever is interested in the company, shareholders, creditors, everyone can take it. Two twenty three. If the company has not received a subscription amount of more than six months period, or the company has no register office, two forty eight they can strike off the company. 
so uh, i told already this 10a that is the people will come on inspection but i have not told i have forgot to told that subscribers have not paid their money adukku ipo there is a time limit 180 days kulla you have to pay the subscription amount for the company's incorporation so section 10a and 12 129 is a new two things new section has been introduced and uh, determining punishment i just now told you the size of the company nature of business carried on public interest nature of default reputation of default is to be considered by the nclt before pursuing any fines then lesser, lesser penalty that is 50 percent half penalties will be putting for small company 1 percent company etc so these are the amendment act and amendment ordinance please understand what is amendment ordinance அமெண்ட் ஆர்டினன்ஸில் ரெண்டு இருக்குது அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆர்டினன்ஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் எயிட்டீன் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆர்டினன்ஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் நைன்டீன் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆர்டினன்ஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் எயிட்டீன் இஸ் அப்ளிகபிள் ஃப்ரம் நவம்பர் டூ தௌசண்ட் எயிட்டீன் பட் இட் வாஸ் அப்ளிகபிள் ஒன்லி டில் பிப்ரவரி டூ தௌசண்ட் நைன்டீன் அகெயின் த சேம் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆர்டினன்ஸ் இன் பிப்ரவரி டூ தௌசண்ட் நைன்டீன் தே டோல் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆர்டினன்ஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் நைன்டீன் இன் ஜூலை டூ தௌசண்ட் நைன்டீன் தே பாஸ்ட் அஸ் அ ஆக்ட் நவ் இட் இஸ் கால் கம்பெனிஸ் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆக்ட் டூ தௌசண்ட் செவன்டீன் சார் டூ தௌசண்ட் நைன்டீன் அதில் தே இன்சர்டட் மோர் ப்ரொவிஷன் தேன் வாட் இஸ் தேர் இந்த அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் ஆர்டினன்ஸ் CSR la da the major things CSR la they introduce fine also okay but that is not applicable for your examination okay be confident first of all be confident if we can complete everything in 2 hours 45 minutes then you can complete the syllabus in one day okay see other than this you have sebi sebi la i will tell you few things only you should read not everything because it is icdr is totally been removed from your syllabus sir icdr remove panitaanga paathukenga maanga maanga pachin irukadinga so sebi la why sebi brokers penalty which is very important the brokers penalty is you no know, excess brokerage five times okay then non delivery of securities then uh, uh, contract note not entering those things deceptive devices question then um, மேனுப்ளேஷன் இன்சைட் அட் ட்ரேடிங் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் க்ரோஸ் ஆர் த்ரீ டைம்ஸ் ஆஃப் ப்ராஃபிட் புக்டு விச் எவர் சார் ஸோ செபியில் எனக்கு தெரிஞ்சு மோஸ்ட்லி பெனால்ட்டி கொஷின்ஸ் ஒன்லி வெல்கம் ஃபேமா கரண்ட் அக்கௌண்ட் எல்ஆர் ஸ்கீம் ஓகே தென் ப்ராஹிபிட்டட் பர்மிஷன் பை சென் ஆர்பிஐ பர்மிஷன் பை சென்ட்ரல் கவர்மெண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் தென் கேபிட்டல் அக்கௌண்ட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் எல்ஆர் ஸ்கீம் இஸ் ஆல்சோ அப்ளிகபிள் ஃபார் கேபிட்டல் அக்கௌண்ட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் ப்ளீஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் இண்டிவிஜுவல்ஸ்க்கு கரண்ட் அக்கௌண்ட் ப்ளஸ் கேபிட்டல் அக்கௌண்ட் டூ பாயிண்ட் ஃபைவ் லேக்ஸ் இஸ் எலிஜிபிள் தென் கேபிட்டல் அக்கௌண்ட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷனில் ரெஸ்ட்ரிக்ஷன் கேன் ஆர் இம்போஸ்டு ஃப்ரீ ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் ப்ராஃபிட்டட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் ப்ராஃபிட்டட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் தான் நிறைய தடவை கொஷின் கேட்டிருக்காங்க ஓகே இன் கரண்ட் அக்கௌண்ட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் ஆல்ட்ரா ப்ராஃபிட் ப்ராஃபிட் ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன் தேர் வாஸ் ஸோ மெனி கொஷின்ஸ் திஸ் ஃப்ரம் திஸ் அலோன் யூ கேன் கெட் ஸோ மச் மார்க்ஸ் இன் ஃபேமா தென் யூ கேன் ஜஸ்ட் ரீட் திஸ் ஏஎம்சி ஆத்தரைஸ்ட் மணி சேஞ்சஸ் அண்ட் அஜுகேஷன் ப்ரொசீடிங்ஸ் ஓகே அண்ட் இன் கேஸ் இஃப் யூஆர் கான்ட்ரா வீனிங் த ஃபேமா ப்ரொவிஷன் ஹவு டு காம்பவுண்ட் த ஃபேமா ப்ரொவிஷன்ஸ் ஓகே இன் கேஸ் இட் இஸ் குவான்டிஃபையபிள் இஃப் இட் இஸ் நாட் குவான்டிஃபையபிள் If you are paying the money which is less than a crore, more than a crore, when you will go for imprisonment? When 6 months imprisonment, when 3 years imprisonment? This is important. So, mostly from the adjudication angle and fines angle, FEMA and SEBI you please study. Don't leave any fines and adjudication thing in FEMA and SEBI. All the best. I hope everyone is receiving my daily questions. If you are not receiving, please note my number. Please send me WhatsApp. I will be sending you 99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99405-99